old drink it down, Spot. It's the human thing to do. That's a medical order. Captain. Okay, okay, I get it. It's the, it's the medical thing to do, Captain. We're gonna drink it down. Let's have a... Tonight we have a special... Tonight? Whenever... Yeah, it is tonight. It's 11 p.m. It is April 6th, 2022. <clears throat> Earlier today, I had a conversation with a, a uh, gentleman named... John, not Jonathan, C. Dvorak. We had a conversation for about an hour and a half. We're going to pretty much just jump right into that. And we're going to listen to that whole conversation before we cut back uh, uh, to some music and to thanking some people and to possibly taking phone calls because it's going to be a little late and I've been drinking for the whole fucking day. So uh, I, need, I needed some liquid courage to talk to the man. Um, there was... A couple of issues. The uh, first issue arrived when uh, the clean feed, uh, John connected, and it was a, a very bad connection. And to possibly fix it, I, I, I set up, uh, uh, I was sending him a link to my Discord channel to possibly use that. For some reason, I thought John could possibly be, you know, use a Discord. But um, I wound up keeping the Discord channel open in a web browser window, which made a couple of beeps and blings. So if you hear some beeps and blings, that's on me, people. So I'm sorry. Where the C stands for cunnilingus. I might, actually. And then um, I realized, as I was drinking, drinking all these beers, that I, won the, I got this golden can that says I might have won a million dollars on it. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, another thing that happens during the episode, um, my my ass, my. Let's just judge. Let's just jump into it and let's listen to the interview with John C. Devore. No, he does definitely, definitely does not use. Uh, maybe Mark Pugner does. But anyway, it was a pleasure talking to John. I hope. Uh, uh, I hope to talk to him again soon. I had a lot to ask him. I wanted to talk. Uh, I had. Uh, I missed. Uh, Missed a couple of questions I wanted to ask him, but I think I, I got a lot of them in, and um, uh, I hope I hope you in and I hope you enjoy. We're gonna let's just listen to the let's listen to the interview now. Should I play a song first? No, we're not gonna play a song first. We're gonna go right into the interview. People are here for John. They're not here for uh, for uh, they're here for John. Let's listen. Okay, let's. Fuck it. Here we go. Uh, three, two. Diane, pl press play already. God damn it! And I am here. Yes, you are here, John. You are here with Nick the Rat. Have you ever imagined uh, this? Uh, your career would bring you to talking to a cartoon rat. You know, it's been on a downhill slide for years, so I expected <laughs> it. Um, also, I wasn't sure if you meant noon your time or noon my time, so I'm a couple couple beers deep already. I hope that's... Uh, oh, sorry. That's that's fine. Uh, happy birthday. Your birthday was yesterday. You probably... Uh, yes, it was. Thank you. You probably... Uh, what did you drink? What did you have? Uh, we actually had a double magnum of Chateau 2010 Beaumont. Ooh. That's... Uh, sounds expensive. It's a big bottle. <laughs> it's a... Um, well, I hope your birthday was uh, great, and uh, but now you're in the sewers with us, and I will I have a lot of questions to ask you. And I hope uh, if I ask you anything inappropriate, just, just tell me to move on and be like, shush. Uh, I'll probably just come up with a snide remark. Yes. Uh, well, first off, actually, I should. It uh, stinks down here, by the way, in this <laughs> sewer. It, it really does, actually. I need to clean the walls. They're uh, a little dirty. Yeah, you are. I should introduce you. I haven't even introduced you. And you are John C. Dvorak. John Charles Dvorak. Uh, is it Jonathan or no? Is it just John? No, no, it's not Jonathan. Then it'd be spelled J O N. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I messed that up with uh, Fletcher as well. And I was calling him Jonathan Fletcher. And he's like, that's not my name. No, like, Jonathan's a different name. Uh, well, there's Nick and Nicholas. Th those work together. That's N I C H. I don't know how these, I don't know how these things work. Uh, but you're a world-renowned writer and broadcaster. You've uh, you've changed the world for, I would say, at least a million people. 
Uh, probably a few dozen. That's my count. <laughs> a few dozen. I, I, I think I feel like I know about about a million people that uh, have been touched by you. Ah, that's yeah. Well, I I congratulate myself if that's true. All right, John. Before we start the interview, though, <laughs> uh, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party of the United States? Nope, I have never been a member of the Communist Party. Okay. Or, nor have I even been uh, asked to become a member. So. What am I supposed to do? You could. I'm sure there's a place you could write into. And it goes right into the White House somewhere, uh, maybe. Uh, I only say that because you always pick red album. Well, wait. I, I take it back. I was a member of the Democrat Party, which is pretty close. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, all right. We gotta end the. the we, we gotta cut the feed for this. Um. Uh, um. Uh, I actually, I actually don't vote. Do you think it's foolish that I don't vote? I don't vote because uh, there's no receipts. Like There's I a can... lot of people that don't vote. <laughs> but do you look down on them? Because you vote, In right? fact, I think half the pop population generally doesn't vote. No, I don't think so. I, I mean, some people have different reasons. for uh, Scott Adams doesn't vote. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people that have reasons for not voting, and uh, usually it's because uh, they're pretty satisfied or completely dissatisfied with everything, and they don't feel the... Some feel that they don't know enough to vote. Uh, or they're being scammed and they don't vote. So it is, I think there's a plenty of reasons not to vote. If they don't vote, they don't vote. I, I actually, I'm on I've the... skipped elections now and again, but generally there's just some local things. Why, why aren't there any receipts? Uh, you should get a receipt. I always get a receipt when I, when I vote. I have a paper ballot, we get a receipt. Oh, but no, you can't, you can't check it against a database, though, can you? Can you make sure that you're... Not that I know of, maybe... No, I agree with that too. It's, a, it's something scamish, scamish about the way it's done. Uh, John, have you ever used a wishing well? A wishing well? Yeah. You have mean you ever tossed a penny in? Yeah. Contaminated the well? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> have you ever tried to kill fish? <laughs> Trying to kill fish? Well, hopefully there's not fish in the well. Eesh. That's true. Too. Um, <laughs> but have probably. you ever used a wishing well? Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I've I've actually I've definitely used a wishing well before, and uh, all my dreams came true. I'm I'm talking to you now. Yeah, there you go. That, uh huh. And you were you were born in L.A. I it, it seems that I was born in Southern California. Yes. Okay, I'm I'm going to try to dig deep and find out more about you right now. Then I got you in the sewer. Well, I don't know. <laughs> You, you seem to be uh, not willing to share a lot of information. Is this because of yeah, you know why? Because people can go. They get too much information. They can look you up and steal your social security card. Next thing you know, you got months of, of agony on your hands. Forget it. Gotcha. So you didn't you didn't grow up in L.A. You just put that on your. Uh, no, I didn't grow up in L.A. I was born in Southern California, and I moved to Northern California uh -huh. immediately. I never lived in Southern California. Do, do people in L.A. bother you? I, I've met somebody from L.A. They're, they seem very full of themselves, like many people. Actually, yeah, people. I, you know, I go to L.A. enough that I can say that there's a lot of nice people down there. Uh, I don't think they're any more full of themselves than they are in San Francisco, personally. I know there's, a, there's this constant battle. Uh, uh, I guess it's a cultural battle, supposedly, between San Francisco and L.A., but uh, L.A. is really the nexus of most culture in the country, and you have to kind of um, have some respect for that, I think. This I mean, it's a hellhole right now, especially with the homeless down there and the lousy, gov the lousy mayor and the horrible district attorney. It's, the politics down there are, are raunchy, and then you have these Hollywood uh, people that mostly live in the, either Malibu, Beverly Hills, or uh, Bel Air, those areas, and they're all uh, assholes. Um, but you know they don't. They're not running the place. Well, they, well who is running the place? Do you ever? You ever you nobody hear... knows. It's an absolute mystery. I've looked into it. They, it seems that nobody's running the place. It's, uh, it might be some like an alien or something. There's like a the Zeitgeist is kind of running the show, right? Like it's like a nameless, faceless entity. I that... think it's Rob Reiner. <laughs> Could be. That would be meathead was his name yeah uh, well it makes sense if you think about it it actually does yeah we're a bunch of old all right so yeah you're not going to answer any any qu like okay okay i'm gonna ask you a, a real personal question this has been on my mind for a long time if you don't want to answer it just tell me to shut up all right so you always give stories about your mother and how she loves uh the eastern world in toilet paper 
But you yeah, never. My, my mom. You, you never have yeah, well, any my stories. My mom used to make a fuss about toilet paper constantly. And uh, her, her, unfortunately, she died before her dream would have come true and had the toilet <laughs> paper shortage because it was it been a I told you so. Like, I was right moment. all along. Okay. Uh, but, you, you never hear uh, stories about your dad, though. Do you, do you have any stories from your, your dad? Oh, my dad's stories aren't as interesting. Uh, my mom was the character. Uh, <laughs> dad was pretty much of a, uh, you know, uh, he was a foreman in a sheet metal shop, an electrician. He was a working guy, and he he kind of got me into uh, appreciating comedy because all he would watch on television from the beginning was if it wasn't a comedy, he wouldn't watch it. And uh, so I was uh, kind of raised on Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca and uh, Milton Berle and it, you name it. In fact, we went to a lot of concerts together. We went to, uh, see, I think I saw the first time that Bill Cosby showed up. Uh, kind of interesting. And I've seen I've seen most of the comedians, the, the early ones uh, in the early days. And uh, that's a credit to my dad. Cause, and he wasn't funny. That's what was funny. <laughs> Funny about it, he wasn't like a laugh right. Never told jokes. He just, just was a, a connoisseur. Did I he think. have a good laugh? It was okay. My dad had a good laugh. I always he always had the comedy shows on too, and I'd watch like George Carlin and Andrew Dice Clay, <laughs> which I don't know if a kid should be really watching at a, a younger age, but maybe. Yeah, well, good good comics are are funny. That's true. I mean, a little filthy too, though. You know, but filthy jokes are just, is life. Some of them. Some of the bad that was never on television, of course, because they really filtered that out. Hmm. Uh, you'd have to go to clubs to see any uh, off-color material. That's tr- that's actually true. Oh man, <laughs> one time I went to a comedy club and and uh, with some other No Agenda listeners, and we were heckling the the comic, and it was it was it was bad, but it was fun. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah. A, a, a good comic can handle the heckling and 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 give it to you. You have to be careful. Not a bunch of No Agenda nerds though. But but yeah, it well, was. Uh, uh, yeah, they could handle a good. They, he didn't. He didn't um, throw us out of the club, so that was good. <laughs> um, hold on one second here. You uh, let me just go back through this. So we got we got a story on yeah, your. Yeah, did you push the record button? I just want to make sure. Uh, the record button is still. Oh damn, that's no, it's it's all recording. That was on your side. You, it's because your focus right, man. I'm telling you, I had a focus right, and it kept glitching out and cyborging like in, like it did for you too. Maybe I don't know. You just you you had a scarlet. Is that what you're saying? I did have a scarlet. Then I upgraded to something what else. What happened to it? Uh, it's it's in the closet now. I got because it kept giving me issues. No, I've never had trouble with this thing. <laughs> so so I hear. <laughs> if you if you in uh, fact it has better fidelity. I've used about five or six of these D to A's, and the the scarlet I think has the best fidelity. Really? Maybe I'll have to uh, take it out again and try it. Uh, I'm still waiting. Adam's coming out with something soon, I hope. He needs... He was kept talking about this uh, uh, audio configuration device he's going to come out with. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully something comes of it. Uh, when, 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 you were, when you were growing up, did you always wanted to be a, a writer, broadcaster? When, I've always, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a podcaster before it was even invented. <laughs> Uh, I was ahead of my time. Well, I actually decided to become a writer. I th- it was either in the second or the fifth grade. And uh, I think I was, because I was writing for some little newspaper in the, in the, in the oh, I'm sorry, fourth grade, fourth grade. I don't think in the second grade I had any clue about anything. Uh, fourth grade, but fifth grade for sure, because I'd written something for uh, my teacher, Stallings was her name. Oh, Stalling, and, yeah. And she uh, said, uh, this is good. You should read. I want you to read it to the, I think it was either the third grade or the fourth grade class, the class below me, one of the two classes. And I read it. It was about Christmas and Santa Claus. And uh, I read it. And I got this huge laugh at the punchline. Uh, and I just, and I was in front of this group and I got this big laugh from this, just reading. I said, this is it. I, this is what I'm going to do. And because uh, I got a response, and, uh, and I was always writing in the school newspapers, and um, right on through, uh, I was writing at Cal's newspaper and the high school newspaper, and then I wrote, you know, then I worked for the Air Pollution District for a while during the Depression, and I, uh, 
I always took my writing of the, my reports very seriously. If you work for the government, you have to write reports, and it's, a, it's very tedious. I never liked it. And, uh, yeah, so I've always kind of been a writer. Oh, also, did you ever work for your dad? Because you said that he was like a foreman. Oh, I did work for my dad for one summer. Was he the, like the first job you ever got or was uh No, no, I had I was a paper boy. That's the first job I ever had. <laughs> I was and, a paper boy too. Uh, then I went from there to I worked other summer jobs. I was always working because in those in the olden days you could get jobs when you were a kid. Uh, and you had to get you can get a job at 12 and 13 and 14 if you get a special permit. I forgot what it was a work permit if you're a child labor. And uh, so I was always working and I did one year work for my dad one summer, and I didn't. He, I didn't think he was a very good boss. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even. I was. He wasn't that good. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, and you you write a lot of like controversial stuff. Well, not really, but you write truthful stuff. Uh, did, did you uh, did you ever like feel scared submitting stuff uh, something to the editor like oh man he's not the editor's not gonna like this or or is the editor if just they don't cool like dude? it they just tell you they just write something else I mean no that's never that's never happened hmm. uh, they may think it stinks or you know you can expect that from some editors who are picky about stuff um, but generally speaking uh, and I didn't have that that many pieces rejected and most of them that were were probably should have been rejected the way I see it. But the uh, no, it's not not an issue. Okay. So if you're a professional writer, yeah, you can pretty much write a lot of copy, and that's and most of the writing that you see in the newspapers, magazines, and even books to some extent is just filler, and it's just something to fill the pages. And and if you get it in on time, that's the main thing. The the writers that get a lot of grief are always late. That's, I think that's, I think the uh, way to have a job in America is just to uh, wake up and go to work on time and you can just work. It, it won't matter. A lot of people say 90% of success is being on time. <laughs> More or less. And if, I guess you just have to want to go and wake up and go and do that. But um, yeah. What's your favorite yeah, you thing to write about? If you don't like it, you, you know, you tend to like do a lousy job. You, you try to get yourself fired. That's you could just be lazy in your job. I, I'm, uh, I, mean, I shouldn't repeat uh, what I was about to say. That's about. probably not bad. If you're on time, you can be lazy. <laughs> and I, I try. I try to be as on time and as lazy as possible. Yes. What, uh, did you? Did you always like technology? Uh, like, did you I write about so. tech? From yeah, the start? because I was. A, I did. A, I was a science fair kid. I was like a nerd. <laughs> so I mean, I remember uh, science fair. What was the first one I did? Are there any pictures of you really, with the, the tricorder cardboard stand-up thing? Yeah, but no. Um, I forget. My science fair projects were always kind of... They, were always, they weren't quite as complicated as some of the other kids, but I always got a ribbon. Did you come up with the idea for yourself, or did your parents give it to you? Because I always remember being fed, like, oh, you should do this, it'll be your idea. I'm like, hey. I don't think so. My parents, uh, I don't believe they gave me any ideas at all. Except the stories I got about the toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> I no, I think I came with the idea. It's not that hard to come with ideas. That's another thing, you know. People always, I don't have anything to write about. I got no ideas. Come on, just <laughs> contemplate for a few minutes. You have plenty of ideas. I actually have too much stuff. I was. I remember the seminar I was uh, taking. There was a daily seminar that you could go to as you wished. Uh, Eric Hoffer, the longshoreman philosopher, had a uh, University of California gave him a room on top of the sociology building. You could go up there and just sit in and listen to him yak. And he was always talking about stuff, anything. You'd just be talking. And it, it, we had a crowd of about maybe 20 people that come in, go, you know, on and off to go up there to listen to him go on. And he had this thing about, uh, which I took to heart. I, he was, you know, a professional, uh, a professional uh, writer at, that, at a, at a, in a very straight, he wrote, the, he wrote uh, uh, the true believers is probably his most famous book, but he did about six or seven books that were really outstanding reads. If you want to kind of think differently. And he would always say, if you got ideas, you got to get them out of your system right away or they clog you up. And uh, I've always felt that to be somewhat true. 
if you don't, you know, get stuff out of your system, you get, you know, backed up ideas, you will get backed up and you won't get anything out. If you don't it's record really it either, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like a sad, it's like all these ideas that I had, they're gone, they're lost. To, uh, well, there, that happens too. Yeah. You have to, taking notes is helpful, but, uh, so I always thought that was good advice. It's it's funny you were like saying he just goes up and he he talks for a while and that's what he does and and that you talk and people listen to you. Yes, it's, this it's, is what I do for kind of a, a living. It's it's funny. I, I find it ironic personally. It's you are recording your thoughts now, like as he was saying, like if you have some thoughts, you write it down, but you don't have to write it down if you're just talking into a microphone. It just flows. It's a yeah, and, it, and it's out of my system. I don't have to deal with it, and it's recorded so too. So there's a lot. We we have more good lost material. If you go listen to old episodes, old episodes of the No Agenda Show, yeah, there's tremendous material that is just lost. It's gone. Nobody records. I mean, it's got a re- oral recording. It's all like oral history, but it's not like. Uh, it's always a surprise. People say, do you know you guys said that blah, 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 like three years ago, and you had it exactly right? And the well, two of us will always acknowledge, yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> but at the same time, I think both of us go, I don't know. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember it. Because uh, we can't, you know, you just once it's out of your system, which is some people don't understand how that works, but that's like the writing. I can read my old writing from like five or six years ago, and it's like, wow, this is pretty good. Uh, I don't remember this, but it's I like it. And uh, that's pretty common with, I think, uh, people that are writers and creative types. They just, you know, the stuff comes and goes. Imagine if you read your stuff and you didn't like it. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to stop never, doing it. It's never happened. <laughs> well, it's, well, that's why you keep doing it. That's good, yeah. Some people, I wish they were able to tell that they were bad writers. And they would just stop, but... Yeah, well, I guess I can't do whether you can, you can kind of, I think a lot of people can tell they're bad or they should be able to tell if they're bad writers because nobody reads their stuff. Uh, I was looking at some, some links to something the other day and I went to start to read it, which seemed like a good idea for a column. I can't remember what exactly what it was about, but I couldn't even get through four paragraphs because it was so disjointed it was like why am i listening to this guy he's obviously uh got something wrong with him and i just never finished i can't even remember what it was about at this point and so bad writers have a problem because they never get any traction ever in anything and uh although some of them are you know they think they're good writers and so they continue but Generally speaking, they never get anywhere. Now, do you, do you read do you read books and stuff, or do you just read? Uh, yeah, of course I read books. What's uh, like? What what kind of books do you like? Oh, you know, I usually read theoretic. I I either read old novels. Uh, I like Sinclair Lewis, for example. Gotcha. Um, or I read uh, I read crazy theories about things. The cycle books about cycles, or I was reading something about. Business, business cycles the other day and there's some other I'd have to look around I have thousands of books but um, I Did just you, read random eclectic stuff I had a book recently I was looking at which was about the Broadway this book was written in the 18, eight, late 1800s is about the Broadway theater and uh, some of the crazy you know they used to be, people used to throw in the in Broadway we're talking about the New York City theater which most of it was, I guess, over in the Bower or in the, what part of town is it? Um, lower, uh, well, China. Where's the Chinatown area? Lower East Side. Uh, yeah, but there's a, a name for this Tribeca? one particular area. No, Tribeca is like movies and stuff. That's a little bit more west. Well, it's uh, where all the watches and uh, bootleg stuff is sold. Like Canal Street and China. Canal Street area. Yeah. Well, that area was what back in the 1800s was where most of the theaters were there, mm. and there were different. You know, besides burlesque, and, and and then vaudeville came out of burlesque, and then the legitimate theater was playing on it in different variations in the same area. And there's still some remnants of the theater district that used to be down in the Canal Street area. And uh, when you read about what was going on, but they used to literally throw stuff at the actors. It was dangerous to be an actor. More than tomatoes. And, sorry. More than tomatoes. Yeah, just anything they had to get their hands on. It sounds like. <laughs> 
And it was uh, people would throw stuff all over the place, and fights would break out. It was it's a little more rowdy, I think, than it is today. That'd be cool if Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, and then like everybody in the audience started fighting. That would have been. I, the, I, the benches, <laughs> yeah, empty the benches. I think that would have been the greatest Oscars ever, especially if everybody started going at it. It'd have been great. Ah. Uh. Missed opportunities. Ah, well. Yeah, they sit there with you know that their jaws agape. Oh, what ah, happened? Ooh, oh. <laughs> oh my! Wonder what's in my gift bag. Uh, did you ever hear of a uh, Robert Anton Wilson? No, uh, maybe. He's a uh, uh, he's kind of like a uh, who's that LSD guy? Uh, some talk. Timothy Leary. Yeah, Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary and Robert Anton Wilson. They were they were. They were like a, a Rat Pack gang sort of together. He has some interesting books if you want to read some weird stuff. I'll take a look. About controlling reality. I, I suggest uh, Prometheus Rising. He gives, a, he gives stuff like if you're looking for something, you'll find it. So if you just look for stuff. Yeah. It's, it's very strange. but he. It's, uh, yeah, I've, I've had this. I've, there's a bunch of these sorts of theories you can practice. It's uh, They tend to work, oddly enough. It's the uh, uh, the placebo effect. The placebo effect freaks me out, John. Why? Because it works, right? Yeah. Why? Does. Why does it work? Uh, well, why it works? Nobody knows exactly <laughs> why it works. That there's freaks theories me out. about. There's scary. theories about why it works, but the fact that it works is good. Is good news. <laughs> really? Um, it's good news. So you just take it for what it is. I guess. Uh freaks you out it does freak me out it's it's like deja vu do you ever have deja vu uh yeah i have deja vu not a lot but i've had it sure does you it go freak- someplace and it's, it's just familiar for whatever reasons you know and you just oh how about that i think i may have been here before <laughs> you just you laugh you laugh and carry on it, it could be something very meaningful john it might be uh, lottery numbers or something you don't know yeah D- did you ever have a, a lucid dream I've had, only had a couple. My wife has a lot of them. Uh, I've had maybe two. Um, two. I mean, two that really were, affected me within the you know the next few days because I could have sworn this actually happened. <laughs> there was one uh, in particular that which is always annoying. Um, a, a good lucid dream you don't know. In fact, unless you have a lot of them, uh, and you're liberal about what a lucid dream is, if you have a real lucid dream. Technically, it seems to me, and this this is what happened to me, you'll never know you had the dream. It will just become part of your day-to-day life as if it happened. Uh, but if you knew you were having it, you could become, quote-unquote, God. I'm a, I'm a lucid dream warrior. I've had many. I've, I've trained uh, for it. Well, I think if you work on it, you can do that. I've had this thing about, I thought it would be a good idea to know that you're having a dream and then you could... St- you know, do crazy things, punch people, take your clothes off, do all kinds of stuff. It gets boring. <laughs> well, you know, I've never been able to keep myself in the dream state. Uh, uh, with that, with that in mind, I've, I have said, I think this is a dream, and then you look around, stupid shit's going on. You think, yeah, this has got to be a dream. There's no way this is happening. And then something in my dreams, at least, something happens that convinces me I'm full of crap, and is I'm not. Dreaming, this is real, and you get sucked back and in. And so, so snap out of it. You can't control reality, and so then I, it slowly either talks me out of thinking that I can control the dream, and then I'm back to dreaming, or I wake up. One of the two. I, I really have never been able to pull it off. I've I've been able to pull it off, and people become like robots because you're like, well, I want that person to do this, and you're like, ah, oh, it's. Then I get flying is cool. Yeah, though. you've always had you struck me as kind of a control freak that would probably <laughs> manage to do this. Yeah. Well, you know, first I look at their boobies, and then, but then after that, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, grab them. <laughs> but you did. It's, it's, you can only grab so many boobs in Europe. You always talk but about after a while. It's you know, there's only that many types, and there's only you know, it's a limited. Uh, yeah, and then pretty soon it's boring. Did you, sure. ever, you ever hang out? the burlesque crowd because you're, you're always talking about like swingers and and, and all these weird people uh, well swingers are, are, are sexual 
people that swap their wives for sex. So I'm, I'm, I, I I'm, never hung out with. I knew one guy who was one became one of them, and oh, it was okay. kind of fascinating how that happened. Uh, but I've never. I don't hang out with that type type of person. I have hung out with a bunch of strippers. We had a, a guy at PC Magazine who I'll, I'll won't mention his name, but he's very famous. He's still famous as a expert on windows. And he lived in Manhattan, and he knew all the girls down in the, all the st- strip clubs in New York. Yeah. So we went. He couldn't drink as much as he w- wished he could. It's unfortunate for him because he always get plastered halfway through one of these escapades. <laughs> so we go down there and hang out with the girls. And and uh, <laughs> I remember one of my favorite stories is I said this girl. She's you know we after hours after the, the bars closed, the strip joints closed, and so we sit down with a bunch of them because they all know him. And they all call him by his first name. And, oh, he, blah, 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 he's here. And so I'm just there. And um, so I get into a conversation with a couple. And one of them, she st- sits down. You know, she's uh, topless, but she's got these pasties on. Yeah. But now it's after hours, so she tears off the whatever those, that substance is that's over their nipples, which doesn't really do much. But I think it's called glue. Anyway. Glue also freaks me out. I don't know where it came from. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, so she strips this stuff off. And... Uh, I say to her, I, she says, I got to get out of this town. It's too much, work. you know, I got to go find, I got to, there's other places where they, I can get work. And I said, why don't you go down to Atlanta? You know, that's a lot of strippers down there and they have a good time. And she just looks at me like, with like aghast with her eyes open. She says, what? I can't go there. Down in Atlanta, they dance totally nude. <laughs> and so I always thought that was rather odd. In Canada, so she was sitting there naked, but okay, I, you know. I thought so. you can't be like totally, totally nude. Like you can't like have your legs a certain. Uh, but in Canada, I heard strip joints in Canada are, are supposed to be really off the wall. Strip joints in Canada are interesting, but the strip, the totally nude is a, you get that in Atlanta and some other parts of the country. You can't, you get it. Actually, there are totally nude places that used to be in Manhattan, but they couldn't serve beer or something. They had <laughs> these rules, you can't be. You can't serve alcohol and have a naked girl in the room or something. I'm not sure what what the laws are now, but the New York strip clubs. Let's just to be honest about it, are the worst. Oh, I have. I've never. They're been overpriced. To one. You know, they're, they're. I don't even. They're run by the mob. They suck. They do. They do. Uh, I've I've been to one in in Jersey and a couple in Louisiana. Um, Louisiana, I'd guess, would be better because <laughs> you could drink everywhere in Louisiana. Um, have you ever been to New Orleans? Of course. You ever, you ever just walk around drinking? Yeah. Yes. That's what, I want. Uh, That's I what you know. do. Wait, was it wine? Were you walking around Louisiana in the hot, in the hot uh, drinking wine, or was it? No, I mean, you know, I'd rather, you know, the, the idea. They have these bars, these bars that are right f- uh, face front to the sidewalks, so there you you don't even have to go in a place to get a drink. And so they make mostly frozen. They have these machines that look like uh, Frosty, you know, uh, Foster's Freeze or something. But you can see the drink being, you've seen these kind of machines before. They're in certain Mexican restaurants and this were for the frozen daiquiris. It's like a frozen daiquiri a hurricane, uh, machine. Yeah. And, they, and they have like five of them and they got, and they're different colors and they're all different flavors of these frozen drinks. And you grab one of them on a hot day and you can walk around. That's what you would do. Uh, yeah. is, you don't want to drink some I some know. wine. I know. Well, they also have good cigars down there, too. They had a whole bunch of cool cigars in Louisiana, at least I, I recall a little bit. I was very drunk. Uh. Well, I, New Orleans is a great place. I always had uh, found it to be kind of uh, problematic to take photos in because <laughs> I had gone. I hadn't gone to New Orleans for until I think the first time I went was in the mid 80s and i always wanted to go there but i never could find it there's no excuse no reason but then they started doing computer shows down there and i was sent down there so i got free trips to new orleans nice uh, like every year or maybe sometimes twice and um and i was always shooting photographs especially in the in the french quarter and I had nothing but trouble getting anything that was even interesting it was hard to take pictures uh, the town is not photogenic. You don't see a lot of New Orleans pictures, uh, generally speaking, in people's collections. And so I finally decided to just start taking pictures of the doors. 
It, Wait, did so you make I that whole a, thing? There was like a there was like some famous door picture person. There, I wasn't the door picture person, but I will say this: once you start just taking pictures of New Orleans doors, yeah. and I'm sure mailboxes or some other little elements are interesting. Then the photos become interesting. Instead of you know trying to get a picture that's whoa, here's New Orleans, just these doors, especially if somebody's sitting in the doorway. Uh, but yeah, doors. Eh, it's, it's a very problematic place for photographers, I think. It's got a lot of French, I, I've seen French other structures that can, there and stuff. It's uh, you think you think you'd have all kinds of good shots, but I don't know. I maybe I, it's possible I don't have the eye for it. But uh, there's a lot of. I ran here's an interesting photography story. Okay. So I'm having my picture taken for one of the magazines. I think I don't know which one. Playgirl. And. And it was in New York as a New York photographer, and so he's and he does fine art. I said, "Oh, I you get I, let me take a look at your stuff. Maybe I can buy something." And then I was I first got something. He said something. Something triggered me, and I said, "You know who's in, you know who's interesting was Marla Maples." This is at the time I had been to a party at uh, with Marla Maples. Marla, no, she was at the party. Really, uh, I was. I went to a party. It was at Guccione's house. It was some event for some some conference in New York, and he had an apartment, and she was there. And uh, this is before she married Trump. And I looked at she was unbelievably pretty. She's like a, a hot. And I mentioned to the photographer. I said, "This is interesting to me that she was so pretty, and I've never seen a, a good photo of her." I've talked to people about this, and they say, oh, well, I've seen photos. She's really pretty in these photos. No, she's not. That's what I'm trying, the, the point I'm trying to make to people. You have no idea how pretty she is until you see her in person. Did she hit on you? And is this why, are you heightened? Is your awareness heightened because she hit on you? Did she talk to you? Yeah, I talked to her, but she didn't hit on me. I can assure you. She was, you could tell if she hit on me, I'd be screwed because she was one of the, she was so... She was one of those women, you see them every once in a while, that if they put their hooks in you, you're fucked. So she was not interested in me, that's for sure. And But I chatted with her, sure. And um, She was spitting so her photographer, pheromones. Her, yeah. Sorry? She was spitting her pheromones. Pheromones? Pheromones? No, it's just, no, I believe me, it's just pure beauty. She I couldn't was, okay. express okay. it anyway. Gotcha. So she, I mentioned the photographer, and the photographer... Had given it had been given an assignment to try to shoot p p pictures of her, and he said it was the same with him. He says he had her in the studio, and he could not capture her. Huh. And this is what brings me back to New Orleans. I can never capture the city when I try try to take pictures of it, even though it's as pretty as it is. And so there's some things that you just can't. Somehow the camera just can't do. And uh, for me, at least, New Orleans was that. And for this guy, he ran into Marla Maples, which I had seen in person, and he had the same issue. He couldn't get a picture of her. Uh, Maybe she's a bad I, actor. Could be, she, you know, these people could be changelings for all we know. <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> I have no idea. She had her skin. I just thought it was interesting that you that this occurs. I, I uh, um, As you grow older, you realize that maybe past thoughts you had or opinions were bad. I used to be, I used to always think photography was not an art form because it's just you're just taking a picture of the scene and i was always uh in the, the mindset that to get a to be a good photographer you just have to take a lot of pictures and you know yeah that's one theory uh, that i i i have that feeling still sort of but i think that you could you could set a scene up so they could have probably got uh, marla in a, uh, a a situation that would bring out the the artwork within her i think it takes again this is where you say art I've run into photographers that can take my picture. I only have two guys that I let take my picture because uh, they just have an eye for it. And there are some guys that just have an unbelievable eye. And it doesn't take much. It's just instead of shooting from here, let me shoot from here uh, three inches over and down. And the, and the picture will structure of the picture changes completely. And those guys are the artists. And... Uh, I don't know that anyone's ever been as much of an artist as needs to happen to capture Marla Maples. It's yeah. too late now. She's yeah. older and whatever. If you're a good but photographer, the, you could still do it. 
But the the regular pro photographers aren't all, you know, they take a million pictures, yeah, and they get two out of them. I've seen guys that can take two shots, and two shots are all you need. That's the guys. I mean, I've seen these, these there's some of these guys, uh, photographers, are just unbelievable. And, and, to, and to, you can go, sh- I, a lot of photographers like to, or the amateurs like myself like to go out and shoot with these guys and which is fun because you, you they'll show you oh no you don't shoot it from there you go over here and you go over there and you go oh geez yeah there's not even anything that's not even something to compare it to wow it's really more uh like that than anything else and the people that can do that are few but there's there are a lot, I mean there's hundreds, but there's few in general considering how many people take pictures. You've Most pictures people. are junk. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but it's it's isn't it really good to have like a uh, like a, a teacher sort of uh, like a, a guru or somebody that's really good at something where they yeah can that's just... the way you go shooting with other people. Yeah, huh? Just don't go with uh, what's that guy that that shot that guy during duck hunting? Uh... Yeah, don't go with him. <laughs> Cheney, I don't go shot, with Dick, don't I've... go shooting with him. I've gone shooting with a number of good photographers, and it's always an eye opener. Have you ever shot a gun? Of course. What's the last gun you shot? When was the last time I shot a gun? It's yeah. the last time I went to a range. That was probably about nine oh. millimeter shotguns. Uh. No, I, everything. I have to, you find guys. There's guys out there that they like to shoot. There's a lot of guys that like to shoot, and this is the kind of the key to success. You want to shoot a lot of guns, different guns. And you find a guy called gun collectors. He goes, oh, these guys have all these guns. Yeah, they have these guns because they're fun to shoot. So you find a guy who's got a collection, and he usually go out to the range with him, and he'll have, uh, and he likes to shoot. <laughs> and so he wants to shoot with somebody. <laughs> it's like taking photos. And, Share your uh, hobby. It's a- and it's, it's a, it's, it is a hobby. And so they have all these guns. So I shot uh, this one guy who was a public relations guy up in Marin County. Uh, he had the best collection I've had for a while uh, of of famous guns. So I got to shoot a Walther PPK, the James Bond gun. Really? That thing's a turd, by the way. Nobody in their right mind would be carrying that thing around. Can't hit the side of a barn. It's uncomfortable. Maybe if you got a, I don't know, maybe my hand size is too big. But I find that gun to be extremely uncomfortable hard hard to shoot not a good gun you get to shoot um you know magnum 40 44 magnums uh you get third i think there's a couple of other, 357s there's another big big bullet um i'm always a little scared to shoot the bigger guns i don't know why it's it's the bang it's like boom it throws you back well you were if you weren't gonna wear a headset so you can't hear it but there is a kick to some of the guns you have to be careful um the I think it was the 44 Magnum or the 357. I'm not sure, but this guy had all of them. And I I also shot a a Mazul, which is a 50 caliber uh, bear gun that you can did not from me. I got it from another guy. It, it, this thing it, it's just a, called a fireball, and a big ball of fire comes out of the end of it, and it makes a huge noise, and it kicks out a big shell to knock down a bear. Uh, if you're in the certain parts of the world where there are, are grizzlies, you have to carry a gun like that around. Isn't it weird that they and, give guns like the name of the animal it could kill? <laughs> I want well, I want a human killing gun then, because the human is at the top of the food chain, right? So yeah, the, 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 every gun would be called that. Um, <laughs> Elephant gun. There we go. People get shot with nine millimeters and thirty eights. I think mostly. I don't know. But the uh, it's fun to go shooting, and, and people don't you know oh yeah you know they're full of shit you know go find somebody that's got a collection teach have him teach you gun safety and then go shoot the guns. Oh John, have um, you ever have you ever hunted? Have you ever shot an animal? Oh, if you don't want to talk about this, it's okay. No, I've never done it. But I mean, I've I when we were kids, I think we had, tw- had a couple of kids that had twenty twos and they'd go out and shoot sparrows. Uh, but no, I've never. I just I, I, not that I wouldn't. I would go duck hunting in a minute, except for the fact that Fuck it duck, just man. seems tedious. <laughs> it, it, just don't go with Dick Cheney. Uh, well, I wouldn't go with Dick Cheney anyway. But especially his pointing a gun. At, this is a good example of gun safety. You're not supposed to ever point the barrel of a gun at anyone. 
Oh, no. Yeah. And never have your finger on the trigger either, unless you're, you're destined to you shoot. You shoot your foot off. <laughs> Who needs no, feet? No, guns are dangerous. I'm not know. saying that's not true. But... Uh, um, you could tell uh, you could tell a lot about a person when you're with them and they're around guns. Like if they're acting like a jerk with a gun, you know that's not a person you should hang out with. I agree. It's it's a good litmus test. A jerk test. with a gun is the worst kind of person to hang out with. It's, yeah. <sighs> um, yeah, because I've I've shot I shot I did like the skeet shooting and the first time I did oh, it. Oh, skeet shooting is the best. I was really good, and I was like, "Wow, video games! I guess trained me up for this." I was like, yeah, yeah, I was good. I was good at skeet shooting. I had uh, uh, for when I got trained, it was at uh, Ziff Davis had these these meetings up, and it was in Aspen. They were, I just when I first learned how to do it, and I, the first four birds I hit right in a row at the beginning, and the guy said I was a natural because of the way I held the shotgun. And, uh, but it was funny because after that I couldn't hit anything because it's actually more tiresome and, and fatiguing because you have to hold one arm out. The book, the guns aren't light. And, uh, there's a lot it of turns force. Out that I, you, know, you need to exercise. You do exercise. John, do you exercise? I <laughs> mildly exercise. I don't exercise enough. I mean, neither, man. It's, it's hard. It's, it's like so easy to do, but it's, it's just hard to do good stuff sometimes when. That's also tedious. Such ca- comfortable couches and chaise lounges around. Uh, uh, did uh, so? Did you get into tech because the chicks and the money? <laughs> not that I know of. I haven't seen that. Or maybe I'm I'm, I'm oblivious. I'm not sure. Uh, there. Uh, well, she, she met Marla and stuff. So maybe it was. It was. Uh, you were. You. You're just a uh, world traveler, though. Uh, and not so much anymore. Eh, I, the the pandemic. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was always a great traveler on somebody else's dime. Really? If you if you could go anywhere right now on your own dime, where would it be? I like Shanghai, um, Paris, of course. But I think you know the French are ruining it because of the nuttiness over the COVID. Uh, Paris is my probably my favorite town. It's very educational. You always have a good time. You see things you don't see anyplace else. Good ideas everywhere, and the food is terrific. I have to go there. Um, but most of France is that way. I like France. Um, Wait, do you speak French? Bordeaux is a nice town. I like Bordeaux quite a bit. John, do you speak um, French? Sorry? Do you speak French? I speak a, enough French to get by, but I don't need to. Now, currently, you don't really need to speak because everyone wants to speak English. Um the French are a little more picky than the Germans. It's almost impossible to speak German if you're an American. I mean, they just won't let you do it. Uh, the French are, you know, they like to see you try and then, you know, they, <laughs> they back laugh. off. Wow. Um, no, I speak uh, hotel and restaurant French. Huh. No problem. Well, I guess that's um, all you really need, huh? Did you, the, 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 the Eiffel Tower is big. Like, I, it's always de- decisive, deceivingly big, in my opinion. I, I got to see that thing. I gotta go to France one day. It is big, and it's brown, which is a lot of people don't understand until they see it. Wow, I'm I'm I have, I'm scared of heights. I went to Seattle and I went on that Space Needle, and I had like yeah. hug I had to hug the needle, and that's only like half the size of the Eiffel Tower, I think. It's pretty big. It's tall. It's up there. You should go there. There was a place I think it was in Vegas. The Palm, I think, had this. They had a one of the floors you go up to. It's one of the uh, one of the nightclubs at the top of the of the place. They have the a plexiglass um, that like a diving board is, with the fence around it. You, you know that goes sticks out over the over the uh, outside of the of the hotel. So you you can walk out and you're out and uh, and you look down. You look down in the street. It's pretty. A lot of people can't manage. They don't like doing that. Hmm. It seems dangerous, but the thing is like three feet of plexiglass. Do you ever do? You ever jump out of an airplane, John, or skydive or climb? No, I never have. I've always wanted to, but I, uh, now I don't want to anymore. <laughs> it's, I, I have a couple of friends that love doing it, and I like the people, but I wouldn't jump out of there. I, I'm too scared. It's like, ah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, uh. People, there are people that like to parachute around. 
They did. He he even got into an accident and knows people that died and still wants to do it. And I'm like, wow. It's, it's yeah, well, a, bungee cords, same thing. You know, every once in a while, one of those does break. I think the most extreme thing I'll do is maybe like a roller coaster. I, it's, no, I'm a roller coaster nut. I love roller coasters. Well, uh, have you ever been Especially to... Especially the old wooden ones that are creaky. Have you been to Coney Island? Uh, the the uh, Yeah, of course. In fact, cyclone. one time Olympus Camera brought us all to New York to look at their new, uh, I think when they first introduced the pen. And um, so they, they gave us a bunch of cameras to take pictures in Coney Island closed, but with all the rides working so we could take all the rides just as oh. much as you want. So I went on the cyclone about... Oh, maybe six times in a row. <laughs> and and I sat on different parts of it. Yeah. So I sat in the front, I sat in the middle, I sat in the back. Back's the And best. I will say this. It, luckily, I sat in the back last because I, <laughs> I was actually hurt. Because <laughs> the back of the roller coaster and the cyclone, especially when it's half empty, the back cars lift up you get thrown and around. slam down on certain of the dips. And it hurts. And I would never, uh, I would never take. If you're going to take the Cyclone, which is a great ride, there's a copy of it in, uh, I think it's outside of Houston. Oh, really? Six Flags or something. They have a copy. It's called, I forget the name of it, but it's, it's an exact copy of the of the Cyclone, and um, it's not as good. The Cyclone's a little better because it's ricketier. It's, yeah, it's that old ass. I will say this: Do not get in the back car of the Cyclone ever. It's it's fun, John. The front seat's the best ride. Have, uh, well, I used to go on the um, um, the well, used to pre uh, the uh, the Wonder Wheel uh, and smoke yeah. a whole, I smoke a whole bunch of weed on the Wonder Wheel and then go on to the yeah the Wonder Wheel. If you have uh, you're afraid of heights, I think that would be disconcerting. Um, it's not really for me. It's uh, it's it was. Uh, I actually have reverse go- vertigo. I'm scared of open areas. It's weird. <laughs> Okay, it's I uh, like looking up. If like a, if I'm like in a large gymnasium and I look up, I feel like gravity's gonna stop and I'm gonna fall upwards. It's it's a very strange feeling. I guess. I think you should be a, become a science fiction writer. <laughs> um, and I could probably uh, write some Star Trek episode. Do you have a fa- uh, favorite Star Trek character? Uh, favorite Star Trek character. My guess for you is probably Kirk. Kirk is probably favorite. Because I know you, you're a big uh, William Shatner fan. I like Shatner's uh, work because he's a wor- hard worker and he's done a lot of different things. And I thought he played the, that character better than anyone else could come up with. It wasn't even like comparing the various James Bonds. It was like there's no comparison. Um, I like Shatner. I, I kind of like uh, I like Spock. I like Shatner. I mean, it, it was just a, it was a good cast. I think all the guys are good. Um, in the original series. After that, I think Data was probably a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. I don't really have a favorite Star Trek character. Have, have you ever watched a Deep Space Nine? I'm sorry? A Deep Space Nine. It was a... Yeah, Deep Space Nine. I think Garrick. Yeah, that was an interesting is series. my favorite one. Yeah, a lot of people, you know. Well, it was interesting because from the perspective that all Star Treks were some ship going uh, into trekking. space and this was stationary and fans of, uh, hardcore fans of the show believed that Deep Space Nine was a sim- symbolic of the fact that this country has frozen it's not moving forward anymore and it's dead in the water and that was Deep Space Nine huh. and it became um uh, a, di- a completely different kind of show because of it, because it wasn't going anywhere. And it, although they did introduce a lot of interesting new ideas from the wormhole, uh, including <laughs> the changelings and the creeps all over the place, are trying to take over one thing or another. It was fun. I liked it. I was a I was a fan of Deep Space Nine. Yeah, it's, well, it's still on Me TV. Uh, have you ever seen Enterprise? Uh, I I couldn't. I didn't like it when it came out. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the acting. I didn't like the stories. Uh, so I never watched it. 
And yes. then it turned out that nobody else did either, and they had to figure out how to f- deal with the timeline, so they made the whole thing a, an imagination, which I, I thought was a chicken shit thing to do. <laughs> it was hugely chicken. It was uh, It's better than what we have now, though, sadly. <laughs> oh, the stuff, I can't watch any of it. It's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's too woke. It's unrealistic. Uh, the, the characters are just miscast. Uh, it seems like the... the uh, the casting directors are casting for a um, variety of, of, of ethnic backgrounds, which makes no sense in, in these sorts of stories. What difference does it make? That's, uh, and, uh, yeah. It's kind of like what culture has become, though. We, we are trying to fill slots now. I don't, it's yeah, very... but it's, it's, it's not popular. These shows, but I mean, is it yeah, or is still, it? There's money. There's money involved. I don't. It's it's not popular. It if there was money involved, it'd be on network TV. Well, that's that's kind of true. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, network TV sucks though. I don't even. I don't even know the last time. Well, I Well, network TV does suck, but it's still where the big money is. It's crazy. It's it's. I think that's changing. It's it's at a it's at a changing point now. Yeah, a lot of everything. people think so. I'm not one of them. You think that. Uh, uh, who, who Slept With My Wife um, is a great show or what? <laughs> or um, was The Bachelorette or what is it called? Oh, it's kind of pathetic how they've had to go into those low-budget pieces of junk to, to, to really maximize their profits. John, they have but, domino knockover games on network TV, like Legos and, and domino toys. They on- don't, they're lost. The, the, the people that are creative all went to these other systems, these streamers. Uh, Apple TV people. I mean, all the all the smart money, or not the smart money, but the creative types who couldn't put up with the with the way networks are organized and suits and the rest of it. Uh, they move their talents all over the place, and so there's like great material everywhere. But on the networks, uh, I, that that's what has to change. The networks have got to reinvent themselves so they get back in action. That this. Material is just lame. It's it's the culture though, but like you were uh, talking about, I think culture in America almost never existed. And it's dying. I don't know. It's a um, it's a kind of messed up because everybody everybody wants to make money off everything. You and and Adam on the No Agenda show and the, um, the Value for Value. That's 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 culture. I think it's putting money into um, sharing. Yeah, it's not that new. It's I not, mean, but it's easier to do now. I mean, now. the original, when PBS first began, they were doing exactly what we're doing. And this is back in the, I don't know when it started, in the 50s. Uh, it was really relying on that the most. And they did quite well for themselves. Of course, they made they figured out that they could make even more money by getting these, uh, by knuckling under and getting a bunch of underwriters and sponsors and advertisers. And so they kind of gave up on it. But they were, they very successful for uh, decades using value for value. And all the churches in the country use value for value. That's true, too. They don't charge you to go into the service. Um, so it's not, not really a new idea. In fact, it's old-fashioned. Well, you you were brought up religious, right? Not really. I was Catholic. I was serious Catholic. Do, do, you, do you think that there's a, uh, a, wormhole, a wormhole alien out there? Uh, controlling everything, sort of? Uh, you, when you get to Adam on the show, you can ask him what he thinks. <laughs> um, what's the first computer you've ever owned? The first one I owned was a Sol 20 with a North Star uh, floppy disk. Oh, man. Don't copy that floppy. Yeah, the, this floppy was a hard sectored. Uh, which is... I think it was the only one that was hard sectored until I think it was maybe two or three brands that were then soft sectoring came along and uh, I don't know what you know why it was more successful but it was but you could copy all the floppies of course you could copy everything oh man I, I didn't want to bring this up right now but I guess I will uh, uh, qu- quantum quantum computer is is yeah. complete bullshit I totally Sorry? Uh, quantum computing is. Uh, I agree with you when you say it's it's bullshit. Well, it seems like bullshit. It's, it does seem like bullshit. But uh, how about quantum theory? Does quantum theory seem like bullshit to you, or do you think that? Well, quantum we... theory's got really nothing to do with quantum computing. <laughs> it's, 
That's the weird part, isn't it? Well, just to use the word quantum, I mean, you, I think there's there's uh, prophylactics called quantum. It has nothing to do with either one. <laughs> but um, that's what. Okay, so I always thought quantum computer meant kind of like quantum physics, and the, uh, like uh, something here is something there as well at the same time. Uh, the quantum, no. I mean, I mean, it's possible. That's the cool thing about using the word quantum with this computing thesis. Yeah. Uh, where you have these mixed states instead of on and off. And uh, so there's these different guys that are very famous for the quantum computers and they, they crop up every once in a while. We think we got one working. <laughs> IBM's got one. We got it working. It's working. We did a calculation. Google has one and they claim that they did some calculation that would have normally taken a, you know 2,000 years and they did it in 10 minutes. And of course, it can't be duplicated. Nobody can see it. You know, it's bull crap. So... So a friend of mine used to be the the tech main tech writer and science then became science writer at the uh, New York Times John Markoff. You know every time one of these guys crops up with some thesis I would always call him up because he was the quantum computing guy. Uh he's the one who wrote about it. He's the one who first I think he's probably introduced the whole idea to the world at the Times. And I would ask him I said what about this what about that? He says you know and I, before I, I preface by saying, this sounds like a lot of bull crap to me. And he, he's, he always say, you know, I've always thought that too. Uh, <laughs> he could never get his head around believing any of it. It's just like, eh. But he still profited off of it. Well, he was just writing about because what you when you're writing as a reporter, you're not taking, you're not opinionizing, you're not. Well, going, well in my opinion, which I do, is that's because it was what I what I was doing. I was a, a basically an opinion journalist. I could say I think this is bull crap, and uh, oh no, you're true. wrong. Here's the reason why. I, when I was doing Silicon Spin, I used to do this. We did it in the late ninety uh, ninety nine, just before the dot com collapse. These guys would come on with these crazy notions about the new economy. And, oh, no, everything's different now because of the Internet. And I always, and like Webvan, you know, would be on the show. And, oh, Webvan. It's all these failures. And I'd say, I always grill them saying, you know, how, how do you, you know, you really believe that this is a new economy and everything's going to change and we're not going to see any of this? All your stores are all going to be out of business. And, oh, yeah, yeah, they were dead serious. And they really believed it. I don't know why. So they were selling. They, they were selling it. They had no. They were believing it too. It wasn't wow. like they were just full of. See, I think they're. I would like to think they're full of crap because yeah. that's easier to identify. Yeah. But no, they were true believers. Back to Eric Hoffer, and uh, the, once they were true believers, it was like you couldn't rationalize with them. And I think quantum computing is in that league. But can you live your life without being a true believer? Like uh, uh, you have true beliefs and stuff. That people, I'm probably doing something or other. Uh, people, everybody might, does. Yeah. So you have to. There's there's a group of people that exist that have these wildly strange true beliefs. That. Uh, oh yeah. It's very. It's very. Well, weird. especially now and in, in, ever since the when we began with the COVID thing. I mean, but with Trump, Trump kind of triggered it in a lot of people. He did. And so you had four years of Trump, and so now people are all geared up in all kinds of different weird ways for some unknown reason. They got all worked up. You know, who cares? It, it might and, lead uh, to an awakening, though, because uh, Bush— <laughs> Or a sleepening. <laughs> well, uh, like like Bush kind of did it for me. I Do you know the only time I voted? Oh, was, Bush was pretty bad, yeah. I voted for John Kerry because of Bush. Yeah, well, that, that shows you how, how hard up you were. I, well, I, I don't even know why I was. <laughs> well, and why was John Kerry even the nominee? What a guy to pick, Mr. Boring. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, he was the... These political the, parties can't come up with anybody? He, he was the news line, because like, I didn't really wake up until I was about 30 or something. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? And, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, I voted for fucking John Kerry. I look back on that. I'm like, that's why I don't vote now. So maybe people well, that are all crazy about Trump will wake up in about 10, 20 years and there'll be uh, there'll be a true golden age. Well, crazy about Trump one way or the other. People are either crazy for him or crazy. They're preoccupied, yeah. both sides. It's ridiculous. They should get over it. 
Uh, but it, it led right into the COVID nuttiness, and uh, which lasted two years. And now we're in the Ukraine nuttiness, so we're throwing all our money. I'm driving along the freeway and hit a pothole just the other day, as usual, on Highway 80. And I'm thinking, oh, they're sending billions to Ukraine, a country nobody even knows about until just recently, and I can't get my potholes fixed. Right. The United States is falling apart. They were always going to do infrastructure. I don't see any evidence they're doing anything. But they are sending arms and bombs to Ukraine so they can kill each other over there uh that's great it's uh it's but meanwhile of course everyone's all jacked up about it we lost a lot of listeners on the no agenda show for deconstructing some of the ukraine bull crap it's well there there maybe in 10 years they'll come back <laughs> well yeah good luck <laughs> it's, everything's about the now it's uh it's it goes it's it's fuck, it's really fucking frustrating it's very fr- it's very frustrating that's all i could really say about that um do you, ever, do you ever have a good teacher? Maybe it's the teachers. If we had better teachers here. Did you have good teachers growing up? I, I only remember good teachers. I only remembered one good teacher. Maybe two in my entire life. And I, I went through two years of college. <laughs> Not much. But uh, in my entire life, up to two years of college, I had about two, maybe three good teachers. I had probably about 25. Lucky. Well, I went to the University of California in its heyday when they had, you know, professors there that were famous. The whole place was stocked with Nobel Prize winners and and famous uh, liberal arts teachers. Uh, Henry May taught, and they all wrote a lot of books. I mean, I was taking a class from, um, uh, what's Jordan, Jordan? Uh, Peterson? I can't think of his first name. <laughs> but he was a professor that had just finished a book uh, white over black that was during the course of studies w- wins the national book award right in the middle of the s- semester uh, kind of guy uh, Winthrop Jordan and uh, also uh, one of the top uh, uh, folklore professors I took a he had great courses as Alan Dundas was a very famous folklorist and he did one whole semester of it was is basically the rationale of the dirty joke for all practical purposes huh. and the whole you know semester's worth of good material um henry may that wrote the intellectual anti-intellectualism in america my my uh advisor was uh kenneth stamp which is a big deal uh it's just a lot of famous people and then i got triggered initially into history by a guy named Kermit Franklin, who was a really good teacher. And I had good teachers in grammar school, too. Got, I had a lot of good teachers. You got teachers. triggered by him? Yeah, I, I, he got, got me into history because of his course. Huh. Uh, he what? just made it so damned interesting that it was like, geez, this is more, this isn't boring. This is quite interesting. What part of history was it? Uh, well, most, well, I went and studied American, pre-Civil War American history mostly. And but you know you, all history is interesting. I mean, if you want to take, I think people would take ancient history because it's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> Do you know my once pro- you get out of the, uh, out of the facts side of it, and you get into the trends side of it? The trends are what's what are interesting. What developed and what changed because of it? I'm going to say something that might upset you, but I have a hard time believing in most history. In what? In most history, like I have. You don't um, believe. Well, that, uh, well. See, this is the thing. You That's just read good writers for that time period. <laughs> you're, you're not. I understand what you're saying because yeah. I know exactly what you mean. That's why people don't like history because that's not history. In history, when you study history, you're not studying times and dates and who won this and who won that, uh, and who the good guys are and who the bad guys Data are. You points, talk yeah. about things a little more deep, deep more deeply and you end up with some analysis of why something like this why why did it happen huh. and what was the uh what was the cause of it what was the societal mechanism that that triggered something it's just a little more interesting than the analysis is interesting but they still might get it wrong john oh. no they always get well that's a, <laughs> that, if the good analysis has that built in do you ever see the show uh deadwood <laughs> you know i i found it I didn't. Yeah, I like watched it? the show a couple. Of, uh, I never thought much of it. Uh, I liked it. I, I know that. people. I don't like to watch a lot of. There's very few TV things that I'll watch hmm. that are episodic, uh, uh, because I I find a lot of them to be uh, 
poorly structured. The writing itself, I mean, it's just a, a structure where the plot holes are obvious and they're just annoy me to no end. And what, what happened to this other thing? I remember in The Sopranos, which I did like and I did watch. Gotcha. Uh, but there was this Russian, there's this Russian guy, I remember, who's some kind of a moving in on the mob or something. I remember they introduced him into the storyline. And then the next thing you know, the guy is, they're shooting him into, the, he's in the, in the, uh, snow and some guys are shooting at him and he runs off and he, and he disappears from the storyline completely without explanation but and but it's Christopher always and, bo- and the walnuts guy getting lost in the woods together in the snow was hilarious there's a bunch of plot holes in the sopranos that are just unacceptable when i first watched the sopranos it was at my friend's house who who we always smoked uh, gigantic blunts together and i always felt it was too violent for me it reminded me of a uh, scarface and and when i'm high and watching i love scarface <laughs> say when... hello to my little friend <laughs> so you like those violent old mo- did you ever see uh, heat <laughs> oh probably yeah, he was the bank robber and went to al pacino and that was that was a good show, movie too uh Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. John, if you could... <laughs> Sorry, I'm really drunk and a little bit high right now. If you could give any advice you're to... You're digging you... now. Now you're digging, so we're going to wrap. No, unless you have to. <laughs> no, it... Colin, could keep... What are you, you going to say? What? I was, I was going to say, I was going to ask you if you have any advice for your uh, younger self, a pre-version of John. If you could go back in time and tell a younger John to do something different, what would it be? They never listen to you anyway, so forget about it. <laughs> I, I I hate time travel anyway, so that's that's a good answer. Uh, let's see. oh oh here's a good thing that I I wrote down that I wanted to ask you about. One time I met this this uh, tall blonde alien named Adam Curry from the future, and uh, he said that you were a little scared that he was bringing up pedophile rings in Europe because you thought they might come after you. Is this true? Say this again. Uh, uh, I, I asked if, if Adam was scared about uh, like uh, exposing the truth, and he said that once you were scared that they were going to start. Yeah, he was going to start talking about like pedophile rings in 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 Europe, in like the Deutsch. No, he's already done that. He the did, but you were just... were you worried about that? Well, he, every time he's done it, he's, last time he did it, and he was in Europe. He's got this thing, and he'd give you all these. He should write a little book about it. He, every time it's something ha- it, it, like what happens is that yeah, because there's somebody come out and shoot him, yeah, or 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 destroy the podcast, or there's a lot of ways you can go about it. But he was at some radio station. He talks about this on the show uh, in Holland that he talking about this, you know, in great detail. And the guy's really interested in it. I think it's tedious. Another, I hate to keep using that word over and over, but it seems to be maybe thematic here. Um, <laughs> And they burn the radio station down. Take a couple of shots at these guys. I mean, this is not a healthy thing to go into. It's not. There are people that do it. There's lots of researchers that, you know, Adam has a, is is definitely um, tuned into it. It has a lot to do with, I think, his first wife, who uh, <laughs> who ran into one of these guys and oh, with the I knife. Oh. It was it just let's put it this way: her clothes were ruined. In the situation. Oh, goodness. And um, people are evil, man. Sometimes you. Just... Well, there's a lot of creeps out there. Is what it is. Yeah. And there are evil people too. There's no doubt about that. And you bump into them, it messes the rest of your life up. I've definitely bumped into. Well, you have to. You avoid them. Don't bump into them. Well, but you know, alcohol's involved, so sometimes you're destined. S- s- stay in a different milieu. <laughs> My milieu. I'm in the sewer, John. You're in here now with me too, so I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it stinks. By the way, did I mention that? <laughs> it it really does. It's a it's a love. It's mostly me. Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, is is Adam an alien or from the future? He might be from the future, but he's not an alien. All right, so he's from he's from my view. He is okay. Uh, we're getting into the weird parts now. Do you believe in aliens? I would say that I'm in kind of simpatico with the Philip Corso book, uh, Day After Roswell, and and also with the anecdotal stories that about Jackie Gleason and uh, President. President Nixon. Yeah. 
And I don't see that I've ever run into one, but I've run into people who have, and they seem that uh, something was uh, <clears throat> something was uh, happening. Uh, but I have, until I mean I'm not com- totally convinced, but I'm not unconvinced. Uh, my my opinion, which I'm sure you don't really care about, is that there's definitely aliens out there because the universe is too freaking big. But have they been to Earth? I don't know. I don't think so. No, there's a lot of weird people around it. Once in a while, you see someone, and then you turn around, they're gone. That's that's. Did they go into a dimensional <laughs> hole or what? All right, now you're you're just joking, right? I hear the sarcasm in your in your podcast. Well, it happens. <laughs> it does. Has that happened? Have you ever had a paranormal experience sort of like that? Mm. Have you ever had something happen to you that you can't explain? That was just like, wow, that was weird. Yeah, probably. I think I've said that to myself every once in a while. That, wow, that was weird. <laughs> but I can't, it's not something so <laughs> life changing that I can remember any examples. <clears throat> well, we already went through deja vu and all that. Yeah, we have the phone ringing. Is the Baker light? You mind if I? Now go for it. It's okay. Can you stop tape? We're gonna we're gonna take a commercial break from one of the giant sponsorships here. Uh, Diane, who do we have lined up? I will. The uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about that thing right there. Hello. <clears throat> we got the uh, which we got the atomic battery thing. Oh, you got the wrong number. We're gonna put the. <laughs> <laughs> it was someone speaking Chinese. John, do you have solar panels on your roof? Do you want some solar power? No, God, no. I get I get those calls all the time too, man. It's yeah. Well, the problem you have in real estate is when you get those solar panels and they have some sort of a long term deal going on. <laughs> very difficult to get a mortgage. Wow, really? Huh. Whoa! Is your phone off the hook? Yeah, I took it off the hook. It wow. stopped. It doesn't oh, last I, that long. I heard the beep, 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 beep. Um, we were talking about paranormal experience. Paranormal, paranormal, uh, do you believe in ghosts and spirits? Everybody in the family does, but I've never seen one. They claim they've all seen one. They've seen one? Yeah. Has Mimi seen one? Yeah. Where, where did you, did you meet Mimi at a seance? No. I met her at a party. At a party? Oh. Was it a communist political party? <laughs> well, it Sorry. wasn't a sex party, if that's what you want. <laughs> well, um, did, when you first met Mimi, did you know she was the one? She's the one. Well, at the moment, at the, she was the one for that night. That's for sure. Oh, <clears throat> it was this a friend's? That's the best place to meet people. The, the internet is. I people have met over the internet, but I think the best place to meet people is at like a party where you might know everybody somebody. meets on the yeah yeah that's the old fa- you're old fashioned the, the way every bit. everybody meets people on the internet now I I've never seen anything like it really yeah it's unbelievable everybody that's what everybody does actually that's I true. remember in the olden days they used to have computer dating <laughs> what a nightmare that was. There's also these uh, cassette tapes. You put the you would actually go to like a studio and sit in a studio yeah, and be I've like, seen, I've seen. That. I've never done that, but I remember. Yeah, I, in fact, I knew a guy who pretty much invented uh, video dating. That's so desperate. <laughs> where we would get on, you make a recording. Hi, I'm Mary, and I like uh, puppies and kittens. I and. Uh, <laughs> And you watched its tapes, and I finally realized that this guy started this business. I'm not going to say who it is, but it was pretty much, I think, if not the inventor, he was close Zip to Davis. it. It was so he can get to pick off the best dates. This was it. <laughs> it was just well, that's like, what just everybody, like, all invention comes from uh, mostly sex and people at the top trying to get it. Well, it's very successful in that regard. Like Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. Just meet chicks. Yeah, that's true. Zuckerberg definitely was just a horn dog trying to, you know, because he had no personality, he still doesn't. And, uh, but he could, uh, he was smart enough, he's smarter than the average bear. Is he still married? Yeah, he's married. The, the irony is, of course, he married a, a uh, kind of an aggressive Chinese woman. So I've, I've, I've only Donald seen her like once when they first got married. Guy to find one of those. <laughs> 
Um, John, you've been to Brazil. You've talking. You've talked. You talking. I used to be famous in Brazil. Um, Brazil Brazilian ladies. What's the best part about them? Is it the cooking? Is it the um... well Brazilian ladies? Is well the be- the most interesting thing about Brazil is the variety of faces you see there. You don't see here. Huh. Uh, That's... You know, we're supposed as humans we cut down a lot of a variety we used to have was cut down to like ten thousand total after some asteroid or something hit. And uh, the variety is in Brazil is extremely varied. It's not. It's beyond comparison of of, the, of people's looks. Oh. It's just everybody is just off the rails for one look or another. Uh, I don't think they're that much different. They're more sociable. Brazilians are, and I think it does come out of Portugal, but it's not even close. It, it's. They're sociable in Portugal, but not like this. The Brazilians are the most sociable people. I show one time I show up and they just put a party around me. These people, <laughs> this we big need- party we had. It was in Rio, and it was at some guy's house. He was like a collector of uh, uh, Dolores Del Rio memorabilia. The whole house was like a museum, and it was just a huge party. And I'm there. Nobody knows who I am. I'm like, it wasn't, I was like the reason for the party, but nobody even knows, I, you know, it's just a joke. Yeah. Because they were just constantly partying and constantly socializing. It's out of control. We don't have that in America very much. It's a- nothing. Well, if we, if we even came close to it, it would be a, it would be unbelievable. It's a, it's like a uh, hosting thing. People don't know how to host people. People don't know how to say, hey, hey welcome to an, our environment. Have a good time in our environment sort of thing. It's 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 pretty lame, yeah, by, especially by comparison to Brazil. Oh, yeah. Brazil is ridiculous. I've been to parties where uh, I had a like – kind of like quote unquote host for the the person giving the party like people are like where's the food where's the drinks where's where's anything and I'm like oh here here I'll let me get you this I'll get you this it's a it's a talent that I I think is completely dead these days it's scary and it's very nice when you bump yeah, into somebody that's actually something to to consider why um and especially if you're in New York, which has got to be a place where you'd have endless events and parties. And it's like... From people trying to rob where you. Are they? I'm, I'm very cynic, John. Uh, I'm also very poor, too. It's it's very hard for a, uh, a, a poor rat from the sewers that smells funny to uh, uh, to mingle. Also, if you don't believe in, in dinosaurs, it's very hard. Well, well there's that still. <laughs> Well, most dinosaurs are made of paper mache. No, I've actually, I, I'm, I'm a pretty hospitable person sometimes. Uh, and I've like snuck into parties and had good times. And I brought friends with me into parties that are rent. There's a lot of stuff happening in New York City. But New York City sucks. It's, it's expensive. It smells like piss. And I have, I have an issue with people that are very full of themselves. And that's why I don't know, I have I have issues with people. But I'm full of myself, too. That's all I got in me. Is this me? I don't know. <laughs> Move to L.A. Become a rat there. I could. Um, is there any current comedians you like? Well, I mean, everyone has to. You have to like uh, Chappelle because he's like a free comedian. He can say what he wants. You usually agree I with him, know. too. He's a pretty agreeable comedian. Yeah, he's, he's very funny. He's a Muslim, which I find interesting. And uh, so we have to, I think maybe the Muslim comedians, there's a number of Muslim comedians that are hilarious. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Um, Allah has a joke book, some hidden somewhere, maybe. Yeah, that would be it. Um, I, I still like uh, Liza Schlesinger. I think she's good. Ah, she is. But she's, you know, she, her material, she can't develop enough material fast enough. And then she's also seemed to have lost her edge once she got married, uh, which is kind of because she was always like this thirty plus year old single chick. Men will suck the life doing, out of you. Doing well, she was doing material about being single, and she could <laughs> mock her friends and herself. And now she, you know, got married, <laughs> and it just seemed to take the whole thing out of her. I just, I don't know if she's going to snap out of it. She, her, her act is going to change. I liked her. She filled the gap. Uh, there's a. There's others that you see. They mostly show up on specials on HBO or 
now you know they're they're here and they're there. Amazon, I think, has got a few of them. I think uh, I saw something interesting. There's a guy. There's much hate. I can't remember. I'm going to get his name as we talk about him. Much maligned, and I never thought he was funny in the least. Um, he was always showing up on a lot of different things, and he was he had a couple of specials. He wasn't funny. He did a, a couple of in the round comedy things. Unfunny. Uh, I can't come up with his name. It was Doug. Is it Doug? Doug uh, Stanhope. No, it wasn't. No, Stanhope's a different guy. It was somebody, but it reminds Stanhope, me of Stanhope. Stanhope's weird. He got. I think I used to like him yes, more. Yes, no, Stanhope is weird. I agree. I used um, to like him more. He's. I like him less now. I don't know. I can't think of this guy, but but he was just a hated comic. Everyone hated him. In which way? And, hated him because he was because he was terrible, <laughs> and he was full of himself, and he thought he was funny, and he wasn't. And then he did a. A bit a couple of years ago, he came out and did a whole. I think it was on HBO. I'm not sure. It was so well structured. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my huh. life. Unfortunately, I can't even remember his name. So I guess he didn't do his job completely. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Stanhope. That's another one. Uh, I mean, Stanhope has moments. It's not you know something that's really great. Do you Do you ever hear uh, of uh, Mitch Hedberg? No. Oh man. You got he he he, uh, he OD'd on uh, he might have actually died on stage. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's, he was a young comic who had very very. Uh, uh, maybe we don't have any good pictures of Bigfoot because he's always blurry. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I know that joke. <laughs> he made that. Uh, that was him. I can't think of it. I mean, offhand, I'd have, have to think about it. But there's there's a few guys out there that are good, and there's you know. But the comedy scene is not what it once was. It's not. It's yeah. It's people it's, are afraid uh, to go. Culture is comedians killing it. themselves. I like Bill Burr. I think he's funny, but he's a little abrasive, and he's uh, you know he can't go to certain venues because people don't like him. He does his pretty good job of backing it off uh, by being you know outrageous, uh, sexist. Um, but he's even becoming he, he uh, can't read. Bill Burr is getting a little woke lately. In uh, who <laughs> Bill Burr is actually becoming slightly work uh, woke. He, oh, he works for Disney. That's why you know it's Disney's. Uh, oh, is does is that true? I uh, well, Carol Blaney in the chat room just said that uh, something about Disney in there. So. <laughs> oh, that would ruin anyone. <laughs> Probably. You know, once you get that money, that's. Money? Well, Burr was making good money. He wasn't starving to death. He was no, he getting a lot of exposure, but maybe Disney money's there. I think there's Disney does, it, you know, Disney's like a machine for talent. They kind of create cookie cutter things. And, you know, I can see Burr fitting into the model, but yeah. not being himself. Um, how about Norm um, MacDonald? You were, did you like Norm MacDonald? I always loved Mor Norm MacDonald. Most people didn't like him. I didn't. Uh, I, when I was growing up, I didn't understand it. And then when I got older, older i was like yeah i get this well he is uh i always thought he was hilarious because he was like a he was like a meta comic because he would uh he would do stuff that was at some other it was like in a it's like a very niche level of humor that only a few people would would think is amusing let alone funny he made fun of and hillary clinton to i've her face. always liked mcdonald he he was telling Hillary Clinton that she killed people to her face. <laughs> well, he would do stuff like, yeah. He seemed like he had brain damage, it seemed to me, but he was really good. <laughs> Which, uh, all right, John, it's 420 in, in over here. So I'm going to ask you one final question because I want to let you go. I don't want to keep you too long. You keep talking about spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous human combustion. Yes, this is you believe in this. I can't say that I witnessed it or I, I totally believe in it, but I've read enough literature and it goes back for hundreds of years, by the way. This is not something that just cropped up. And I read a, an article in True Magazine, a magazine that when it was very formative in my formative years, it was popular. And there was a good article on it in, in True Magazine, on Spontaneous Human Combustion. And when I read that article, I started looking for it after a while. And uh, it crops up. It keeps cropping up. 
And so I'm thinking, yeah, you know, something screwy about it, but it's maybe a fact. It may be a real thing. Why do you ask? But what makes you think it's a real thing? No, I said it might be a real thing. But what, 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 what did they say in the article that made you think this? Be, well, it was a document. It was documenting all these instances and the, and the description. And then if you go back in history and you read some old books, you might read it in a novel, you might read it in something, goes way, you know, at some point it goes back in history or, or some uh, description of some situation or something more recent that happens and it's kind of inexplainable. And if you, if you, if you use the models of spontaneous human combustion, and what you can expect from it, what happens. They all fit in. They all fit in. Oh, you missed out. These reporters don't know. Nobody knows what it is. But if you re, if you do know what it is and what it's supposed to do and what it, how it works, and you see these descriptions of people, I, I'm baffled by this. I don't know what the heck it could have been. And then if you, as someone who knows about spontaneous human combustion, read it, you say, ah, it's another case of spontaneous human combustion. So uh, spontaneous spontaneous human combustion, which is hard enough to say, um, it just keeps cropping up. What am I supposed to do? I'm familiar with it. I, I, yeah, I'm convinced there's some something to it. I'm not the only one, by the way. Adam, too? I mean, uh, no, people believe in, uh, like, uh, abductions. I'll tell you what happens. Do you think First people you are abducted? Be... Or, uh... Uh, uh, well, the abduction thing... Uh, there's I, a lot I'm of stories about that. Th- I'm more on the theory. Uh, I think Adam's kind of on this part too, about the abductions really being a, a cover story for something else that happened, uh, and they get hypnotized into thinking they were abducted instead of the fact that they they were under some experimental watch by the CIA. But back to spontaneous human combustion, because um, you 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 believe in this. This is like this is John belief here. You sitting in an overstuffed chair? Blue My chair does. I have, a, I have a Herman Miller chair. I can. No, well, that's not. You're not going to catch on fire on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> With all the WD forty, I squirted on it or ran. It doesn't. Hand. That doesn't mean anything. That's not spontaneous. If you spray yourself, that's true. With, well, what if I drink? Flu- with you know lighter fluid and strike a match. <laughs> it's. For, <laughs> For me, that's for me. It's spontaneous. For the people that find me, maybe it's not. Uh, but go on, go on. I'm sorry, I broke your your train of. Th- um. No, that's good. I just wanted to say that there's a lot of uh, examples. There is, and there it. is uh, people. There's like remnants of, like, it almost looks like a nuclear explosion, like the uh, the shadow from a nuclear bomb. Well, there's usually what's left is the shoes are usually still there, <laughs> and if you're in an overstuffed chair, the couch is usually pretty. It's burnt. But it's not never catches on fire, which is what makes it weird. Uh, you just go up in flames. You just poof, poof, it's it's scary. Do you fear? Do you fear that one day you might just? Did you ever have no. like heartburn or uh, eat something spicy and like? Uh-oh. I don't think that's no. <laughs> if a blue flame starts jutting out from my midsection, <laughs> then I'll have something to worry about. John, do you like horror movies at all? I know I'm now I'm just. Uh, Asking you questions that I'm very curious about. Do, do I like hard movies? Hor- horror, hor- horror, horror, horror. Uh, like you know, a- I find most horror movies. Uh, can I use this word one more time? Let me see you if could. I can count this up. <laughs> no, I can use Trivial? The word tedious. Tedious. Uh, and I don't like gruesome. I don't like like the Wes uh, Craven movies. I never thought those were fun to watch. I think they just give you nightmares. <laughs> but. <laughs> Where the thing of uh, floating drills flying around, it goes and gloms onto your head, clamps down, and then drills a hole in your brain. I, you know, why do you want to watch this? It just doesn't seem like a good thing to witness, even if it's a movie. It's, uh, uh, I understand, I understand your, th- uh, it's because if somebody could recreate that or uh, artistically show you how this might look, like if, if you could watch a movie of some, it's, um, uh, People watch NASCAR because of the crashes. A, a horror movie is like it should be constant NASCAR crashes recreated. Yeah, for you. I watch NASCAR for the crashes or for the racing. I used to watch it more when Jimmy Johnson was racing because he was really good. But 
you don't just watch it for the crashes. You watch, you're intrigued by the crashes because they're interesting to see. But generally speaking, it's most of the maneuvering and the guys cussing and the. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's it's a good sport. Uh, it's also hard. It's rough. It's it looks like you know you're just sitting there driving. It's to tell that to Danica Patrick and the fact that she can never win a race. She was always good at the beginning, but she'd poop out. She didn't have enough you know strength. John, are you high right and now? And I've driven a NASCAR race. Are you, are you stoned, John? <laughs> I might have just why because uh, I'm very high right now, and I'm just I'm getting these. Uh, I, I could pick up on small uh, uh, changes in the quantum waves of reality. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Have you ever done a psychedelic drug? Because, like, you, you talk about that uh, you've done you, you've done the weed, but you never really say it like, oh, I, you, I've done the, the weed. The weed. Like, I don't believe that. If you said that you could roll a blunt, I wouldn't believe you. Okay. But, but. I do think I do think that you uh, you're you're smoking pipes. You're you're hitting it during the show of no agenda. I think you're getting high. No, right I never smoke. In fact, I haven't smoked a joint probably for twenty years. Uh, well, fifteen at least, and I didn't like it then. It's a, a, it makes you cough. It's it lousy. It's it's crap. I mean, you know, it, you, edibles are okay. I I you know if you know how to use them. Otherwise, people don't know what they're doing with edibles, and they take an edible or it's a piece of an edible and then they have uh they wait an hour nothing happens so they take some more <laughs> and then you're you're done after that. <laughs> um, and then they take they wait another half hour and they take some more and then they're totally screwed uh it takes about an hour and a half to two hours for an edible to do anything and uh smoking is more direct but it's no good it's like you know hard on the lungs it makes you cough it's no it sucks it's true so i don't not a fan of that at all and uh and all this other stuff you know it's all when you're a kid and you feel you know experimental it's a good time to do these things but when you're older you know and you're doing it it's pathetic <laughs> it's like i hate to I say it. you know what's that, besides being an old druggie uh, as being pathetic. The other thing is anyone over the age of 50 who wears jeans, especially the slightly bleached ones, <laughs> you don't have an ass. You look like shit in these jeans. Go find some slacks. So, I mean, these things are like, you just brought an annoying topic up, so. It's, it's fine. I wish I had the uh, <laughs> pet peeve of the day. <laughs> oh, dudes so anyway. in jeans. Okay, now last question, and I'm out of here. All right, last question. Wait, do I even have any more? I don't even know if I do. Let's see here. Um, uh, <laughs> My last question for you, John, is: Did you ever, did you ever feel like getting into uh, selling stuff like um, uh, 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 twist off wines or PG tips? Whenever you mention something to buy on No Agenda, I'm sure the sales see a spike. I, I hope have, so. I have three years worth of PG tips in my house still. You don't need to buy that many. <laughs> it was cheap. It was. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, it's a good tea. It's an everyday tea. I just I discovered that tea when I was working at PC Mag UK, and I was over there at the office, spending a week there. I don't know what I was doing, writing some stuff, and they kept. That's what they had. That was their drink there, and I just fell in love with it. As an everyday kind of drink, drink, drink it, you know. Did you did you fall in love with Ranch Hand or Knack while you were there too? No, Ranch Hand came from a from an infomercial. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, Knack. I don't know. I have that written down in my notes. I forget. I think it was like a breath mint or something. I don't even know. Uh, either way, John, <laughs> I'm so happy you spent this time with me, and uh, I'm happy that you had a happy birthday. And I'm very. Drunk. Well, I thank you for that. Oh wait, wait! I do and have one more question. I'm sorry. Uh, What's your favorite candy? Do you have a candy that you like? Oh, that's a good question, actually, in some funny way. Um, I like Kit Kat. I like the different Kit Kats, not the regular ones, but like the red ones. The dark chocolate Kit Kat is a Ooh. dynamite product. Oh. If you can find it. Very hard to find. The green Kit Kats are really good. The ones made from matcha. Uh, that's a hard one to get. They they have all these different versions they that do. are 
the worldwide. There's a red one in Japan. They have it. It's very expensive. Why don't they sell it in America? Is it because like the market's too small? The, the dark chocolate Kit Kats are sold here. They're just hard to find. They also have like the white chocolate Kit Kats. I've seen. Oh, those. white chocolate Kit Kat be dynamite. They, I've seen those around in a, like delis around yeah. here. But uh, uh, all right, John. I can't okay. believe you actually came on the show. Yeah, well, here I am, and now I'm going. <laughs> I so I, I appreciate you inviting me on, and uh, you know, go podcasting. Fuck yeah, go podcasting. Um, have a great uh, no agenda tomorrow. I'll. Um, uh, it won't be on. It'll be the, uh, oh, the best of best of of music. It's going to be a killer show, by the way. So we'll be back on, and I'll see you, or you you'll hear me on Sunday. So, <laughs> let's see if Adam gets that right. <laughs> well, it depends on where you post this thing it might be old by the time I. oh it's coming up tonight this is going news. up tonight uh, going up tonight heck Woo. yeah <laughs> yes okay <laughs> all right adios rat have a great one john love you um have a good one bye how do i See hang ya. up here we, gotta, we need some ranch hand on these chairs there we go i think uh we're good
us anyway. Under the sheets, you're killing me. You keep stop stabbing me. Here we go, everybody. That was uh, my interview with uh, JCD. Um, f- fucking Discord bleeps drove me crazy. Uh, John sounded great. I wish he wore headphones, though, so I wouldn't get to, uh, uh, have to tell him to turn his radio down. Adam, I don't know. I don't, know you, I don't know how you do it, brother, but you got the uh, the noise gate on the, the clean feed. I'm using the free version, so I couldn't really do too much um, audio stuff with it. But uh, John's great. I love I loved talking to him. I'm just so happy I got to actually talk to him. Um, <sighs> you, you, just, you, you, you bring up a topic, and he'll just jump into a story that's really interesting. It's... Um, It was, it was a good conversation, man. I had some other questions I wanted to talk to him about. I want to talk to him about music and bring up other things, but it's uh, it's over now. I'll have to wait, I'll have to wait till another uh, uh, weird moon or whatever, mo- weird moon rising for him to come back on the show, I guess. But uh, Also, yes, I, uh, I need to thank my agent, Trey from Philly. He helped set that whole thing up because... I've asked John to come on the show many times, uh, not many, a couple times. I'm pretty lazy with trying to book people, 
But uh, Trey from Philly was acting as my agent, and uh, he he got John to actually he can talk to me. So uh, the, thanks to Trey from Philly for pretty much making this episode possible. Uh, because if it wasn't for him, I'd probably be too lazy to keep on emailing John to ask him to come on the show. <laughs> Seems like with a little encouragement and a little push, he, he's uh, he's willing to he's willing to do it. Also, now I want to I want to mess with my sound settings a little bit more now because uh, John just had a very deep deep uh, sound and I had a very very hollow sound to my voice. Um, John, you come on my show with your deep sound. And I'm still drinking these beers. Uh, this gold can thing, by the way, it was it was a. Uh, it was it was something from February. I so I'm not going to win that million dollars from uh, Budweiser. This is fucking garbage beer that I had to grab on the fly this morning. I'm working my way through like a what was it, like a a 69 pack. I don't even know what it is. I know I sounded fine. Thank you, Servo. Just that in the, when you listen to yourself, you, you start to... It's it's good to actually listen to your creation. It's good to look at your work sometimes. It's good to hear it because then you can actually uh, critique it and figure out what needs help and uh, where you should put the effort or something. You gotta, do the, you gotta do the work sometimes. But, you know, getting fucking drunk and stoned is never gonna help anybody. Uh, by the way, that song you just heard was what the hell was that that was a pretty fun song that was um it was a mashup song um uh, created by josh dw something about the fiery sheets i guess that's a uh, a mix-up of all the people in there there was a uh, some daft punk there was some adele there was uh who else was in that little mix there it was it was good uh Let me open this here. Ellie Goulding and Ely Ely Goulding. I'm not sure. Uh, it sounded familiar. Like I, I knew that the what I heard was something I heard before, but uh, oh wow. Tom Green just liked one of my tweets. Tom Green tweeted, "I remember once I met an uh, an extremely famous actor backstage in an award show, and we spoke for about ten minutes." At the end of the conversation, he asked me what it was like being married to Renee Zellweger, and I told him that it was great. Uh, Tom Green was never married to Renee, Renee Zellweger. He was he was married to uh, the chick from E.T. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Amer America's Darling, what's her name? Ah, oh, damn. Um, but anyway, I tweeted back at him. I said, I can imagine you saying yes and nodding to this. LOL, it makes me feel warm inside. And he, he liked that comment. Drew Barrymore. Okay, yeah, it's, he was married to Drew Barrymore, yeah. That must have been weird. Like, why did... Just a weird... Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're we're still having a show tonight. We still have uh, a lot more music to go through. We're gonna thank some people, and uh, maybe I'll open the phone lines. It's kind of late, and I'm kind of tired. I've I've been up for uh, since noon, uh, Californian time, trying to talk to. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll open the phone lines. Either way, we're gonna we're gonna do shorter segments now, though, because we have already been live for a long time, but. Let's listen to some good old tunes. All this could be found on SoundCloud. Uh, do a search for Nick the Rat's likes on there. You could go to nicktherat.com and click uh, the social men likes. I don't... It's there. Trust me. I'm there. You, if you look, you'll find it. If you don't, you'll never find it. You'll never find stuff you're not looking for. But uh, ESCP with Cyber Crime Story is what I'm looking for right now. We're going to be back and thank some people. Then we'll open the phone lines. You can tell me how I did.
Welcome back to Nick the Rat Radio. That was a, a fun song. Apparently, a lot of people in the chat thought it sounded like FTL. And I don't disagree with them. That did, did sound like uh, did sound like FTL. Uh, and a lot of people uh, really liked FTL. How, see, now I'm thinking I should put my thing right here, right over here. This is where might sound more might sound more colorful. I don't. See, now I shouldn't fuck with a sound live. Because if you fuck with sound live, then it's going to fuck with the whole mix. You don't want to do that. Okay. Um, we should thank people. It's almost, it's, it is, it's, it's one o'clock in the morning. It's now midnight in the sewer in the middle of America, I think, or the next time zone, time zone over. It's one, one o'clock. Whoa. I'm really, really high drunk and wired. It's very, it's a. Uh, Anybody want to see my butt? Okay, well, if you want to see my butt, you could donate to nick at nicktherat.com. You go there, and you click donate, and you could uh, you could donate there. I didn't go to the uh, the the mailbox this week. I didn't get to go to the the PO box, the the poo box, the po box. But uh, sorry. So if you sent anything to the PO box this week, it's you have to wait till next week. Okay. I usually don't miss. I usually don't miss that. But uh, you could uh, have donated other ways as well, without going to the nine zero five four nine Brooklyn, New York one one two zero nine Nick the Rat care package to fucking box hold thing. In reality, it's whatever. You know, it's it's fine. I'll I'll talk about. I'll I'll open it. Now. Ooh, we do have some donations though, and we're gonna thank these people now. Uh, for donations, I say uh, the the initials and the amount, and if there's a note, I uh, I'm trying not to dox people. Some people might not want their names read, so I just read their initials. You know who you are. It's a fucking box holes. Um, we have P L L C. I guess that's how I would say that initial. I don't know. Um, fourteen fourteen P L L C. Cheers to you. P P L L C has been uh, around for a long time. Uh, now I'm saying P L L C. It sounds like a urination limited liability company. Uh, but but thank you so much for the fourteen fourteen. And your continued support helps me uh, uh, get drunk like a skunk. We have another donation here. Oh, whoa. As is above, so is below. Is heaven as shitty as the sewer? Is that why your breath smells like manure? Sewer family, y'all my favorite turds, and I'll never shit you. I have 20 big ones. Twenty big ones and a little, a uh, little poem. That's maybe I could say a little. Let me hold on. I don't know if this even works over here anymore. No. Nah. Where does it work? Where does it work? As is as above, 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 so is so is so is so is so All right, enough of that. Um, thank you for that donation. Uh, and also, uh, I just want to say thanks again to uh, the my agent, uh, the thirty three. What the hell, Raticulous from S L. S L is a new donator, and they just came out of the blue with thirty three trillion dollars. I'm about to help the deficit in America. Thank you so much for helping. Uh, donating to me and helping the... Yeah, that's going to be a lot of taxes I'm going to have to pay. I didn't do my fucking taxes yet. Oh, God. All right. Uh, thank you so much for that. And I, I hope to see you around again one day. Uh, and if you ever need any help from sewer citizens, let me know. We got a... We cannot process your re reoccurring payment. Okay? So I think that's... Ow. I think that's all the uh, donation donations. We also have, um, the, what is this called? The fucking Jeff Bezos fuckboy machine Twitch donations. 
we had a couple followers. We have uh, M. Duckuous, BTP33, Bruns95, that was seven days ago. Uh, and seven days ago, Ducky on Trey from Philly resubbed. I think that was mentioned on the last episode. But yes, Trey from Philly, thank you. New blood, yes. Fresh, tasty, new blood. Now, right now is usually when I would play an advertisement by a giant corporation, a mega corporation, as they're better, betterly known. But since it's already so late, we're going to jump into some music. We're going to come back and we're going to open the phone lines. Maybe we'll talk to some people for a little bit. But let's, uh, Listen to Lo-Fi Factory with a brand new me in a brand new day.
Now I'm gonna play the hunt right now. Do 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 do. But we can't do that. We're in the middle of a show, and we are gonna listen to some voice mails. 917-719-5923. You could call in and talk to me live if you so wish or dare. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Rick. But if you can leave voicemails like that, 917-719-5923. Is uh, JCD on? He, w- he, he was. Mick, am I on with JCD? No, you're not. Oh, little stick. Fiddle, fiddle your sticks. Squiddle, squ- squiddle sticks. Fiddle, fiddle flips. I need I need to shave. Maybe I'll have some more beer. Hold on a second. All right, my pants are on this time. You can't see my ass from gra- grabbing some beers. That calls for a celebration. Ah, fuck it. I'm tired. Let's go to another song right now. Fuck it. Let's play. This one's for John. It's a Alma Flua Skyfall. This is the end. Hope you forever come to ten. Feel the ear move and then hear my heart burst again. For this is the end. I'm trying to doubt this moment. It's over to our own day. The step away, I stole. Let the sky fall when we crumble. We will stand tall, face it all together. Let the sky fall when we crumble. We will stand tall, face it all at sky fall. At sky fall. Sky falls it where we start A thousand miles of polar apart Where words could lie and day is dark You have my number, you can take my name But to never have my heart Let the sky fall When we crumble We will stand tall it all together let the sky fall when we crumble we will stand tall face it all at sky fall at sky fall where you go I come what you see I see I'll never be me without a security of your love and arms. Keep me from a heart. Put your head in my hand. We stand. Let the sky fall when we crumble. We will stand tall, face it all together. Let the sky fall. Sky fall. 
let the sky fall Let the sky fall Phone lines weren't open. I lied to all of you. Okay, they're open now, though. It looks like during that time period, two people tried to call in. Let's listen to see if there's a transcript available to buy... No wonder the transcript wasn't available. The tram... Nine one seven seven one nine five nine two. Three. I had a story about mushrooms. Okay. And I wanted to ask you a question about a viral video that I was wondering if you'd seen. I'll uh, I'll call back next week. I think since it's already o o eleven here. All right, man. Take it easy. Yeah, give me a call back next week. I'll talk to you about. Sure it was great. Oh, thanks. Wow. Sweet. Uh, hello, caller. Oh, hey. How are you doing, Nick Durant? How are you doing? Fantastic. That was a good interview. I like I liked that. It's, there were a lot of good JCD stories. There was. That's why I was happy to, to have him on. I didn't have to do any work. I would just, uh, I'd push the first domino, and then he'd do the rest of the yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. He just, he just pull the string, and it goes and goes and goes. It's great. I, yeah. I want to sit on his lap while yeah. he's talking like Santa Claus and, and see if he's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, just... Yeah, I'm glad that you asked him what kind of books that he likes to read because I was always curious about that. I'm always curious about uh, what various writers like to read when they're actually just kind of reading for fun or for whatever, you know? I didn't think he. I thought he. I... <laughs> I forgot. I wanted to ask him what podcast he listened to. I know he listens to a whole bunch of weird <laughs> podcasts, but I, 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 there's definitely a podcast that he listens to that he likes because he always. He's, yeah, there's got there's got to be. It definitely has to be. I yeah. mean, if if it were my guess, I bet you his favorite podcast would be something like Hardcore History. Really, where it's just a huge deep dive into a historical thing. Like I, I can see him liking a, a podcast like that because there's just, I'm like you know when you listen to that one, it's just nuggets of information about various historical things that you just would never think to, kind of delve. And he does like history. Yeah. Oh yeah. Either that or something like WATP where they're just making fun of other podcasts. I know he was on that one once. Although he he felt like they were kind of mean. <laughs> Well, wow, really? They were mean to him? Well, they make fun of uh, other podcasts, you know. Yeah, but but did they make fun of John? No, not really. Well, they 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 kind of pick on the ones that suck, either if they're like unheard of or if they uh, or if they're really really popular, but they're just kind of bad podcasts anyway. That's a. Uh, I don't know. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm sure they made fun of me at some point. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? Is I so don't know if they have yet. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I, I, I listen every now and again, but I don't think I've seen your name crop up. Damn. Uh, Diane, <laughs> send them a letter. Tell them to do one about my show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nice. Yeah. I, I wish you could got gotten this more of the uh, like the music questions there, because uh, he's been to a lot of concerts that you know none of us are gonna get to go see a Jimi Hendrix concert. That's true. He, he well, his dad used to bring him to comedy shows. That's fucking cool. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I wonder if his Bob brought him to any rock concerts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, pack up the toilet paper. We're going to go see ACDC. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I I thought I had a question and I cannot for, uh, remember it, so I'm gonna uh, get on out of here so you can get to other callers. Oh, oh, okay, bye. Also, I want to go. I want to go to sleep. I'm tired. Good night, uh, caller. I, right. I've never heard before. It's good talking to you. All right, yeah. Well, we're you know we're gonna close the phone lines again. We're just gonna play the next song here. We're gonna we're gonna speed run through this. Uh, Adderall through the. Border crossing. We got the next song is Camus with Age of Fire.
I, I just want to say uh, that like conversation was so organic and natural. It's like you guys are old friends. He's he's an amazing guy, but you know, Nick, you are too. You you were you're an amazing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, rat thing, Crimea, uh, lab experiment gone wrong, fucking, uh, uh, I don't know how to really explain what, uh, you are, but JCD is awesome. You know, uh, Abe is really respectful to you considering what you're made of. But, uh, listen, you, you had a long day of it uh, out there hunting in the world. And, Interviewing and podcasting. Go, 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 go podcasting. You know what I'm saying, pal? But, uh, you, you, you take care and, uh, keep up the good work and, uh, servo right on, bro. They have been here since the dawn of time. They're here now, waiting, watching. They've gone unchecked unnoticed and now they're monsters Matter. my hand something bit my hand are you okay let's get the hell out of here would you believe the other day i saw a rat this big are you through no i mean it he was this big overpopulated yeah. oversized <laughs> and hungry Lady friend was absolutely right about the rats. They've gotten into the subway. The rat population of the world is estimated to be 108 billion. 24 times the human population. Are you worried you might lose your woman? Yeah. Have you ever not satisfied her? Uh, no. Would you like to change that? Maybe. Who has the time? Uh-huh. Not me. No. Not you. Oh, uh-huh. no. Dark Sewer Network has the solution. Oh, really? Tell me more. Introducing the Hulk. Touchy Fat Man! Oh. The first nuclear-powered vibrator on the market. Oh, my. Now you, too, can finally drop bombs in the bedroom and blow your lover away. Is that even legal? Our sex scientist spent years perfecting the ultimate stimulator. Oh. It operates with two settings, gun type and implosion. Gun type sounds good. I like that. You can't get more bang for your buck. Oh, okay. Only $69.99. On the Dark Sewer Network. Watch it! Use of this device may cause paralysis, temporal dimensional rifts, life-threatening orgasms, and anal leakage. Nuclear batteries not included. Don't listen to those uh, warnings. It's fine. I've used it several times already. Let's listen to Droomsphere with Berliner. I don't even know what I just said.
All right, thank you. Hello. This is my second time on the show. All right. I mean, I mean, the first time must have been okay. But they say during the summer that drinks are ice cold. I hope not, because that means they would be impossible to drink. Come on, Jex. <laughs> hey, for the ninth consecutive year, uh, Nick, JetBlue Air, well, Airlines ranked first for satisfaction among all North American airlines. But you know what ranked least in satisfaction? 9-11 Airlines. <laughs> what a terrible name for an airline. It reminds me of that tragedy. <laughs> oh, 9-11. <laughs> Yeah, no. oh, don't laugh at 9 11. I tried to tell him not to go, laugh. Adam. I know. I walked through blood and bones in the streets of Manhattan trying to find my brother. Jesus. Yeah, he was in northern Canada. absolutely free except for laws of nature those if you drink you get drunk that's a law if you if you get old you die that's a law too if you sit on a tack you will bleed from the ass these are the only laws that you're born with and any government just fucks you out of that type of freedom if you if you really think you're free tonight you hero officer bomb you're a free man you live in a free country but you're just you go upstairs you take your own beer you risked your life for. You sit on the hood of your monster truck in the parking lot. And drink your beer. And see how long it is before actual veteran cops come by and pound on you with truncheons on the kidneys to show, why, why can't I do it? I'm just having a beer. What? I don't know. That's the law, though. You don't fuck around. You can't drive down the street without a seat belt on. Why not? I don't know. You're going to put on a helmet. You can't sit in your own backyard naked, your own filthy, dirty flesh that you're born with. You know that body you carry around? Filthy. You can't sit up. Why not? I don't know. That's just the way it is. Mother! You're not free. You're not free in the least. You need a diploma in this country to cut hair. You're free. You need to keep your tray in an upright and locked position during takeoff. It's not just a hack premise. It's a fucking felony. And uh, Cunty the Hero Sky Club will fucking throw you off the plane as a terrorist for going, why do I have to have this? This doesn't make sense. They say if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish... Then he's got to get a fishing license, but he doesn't have any money. So he's got to get a job, and he has to get into the social security system and pay taxes. And now you're going to audit the poor cocksucker, because he's not really good with math. You pull the IRS van up to your house, he'll take all your shit. He'll take your black velvet Elvis and your Batman toothbrush and your penis pump, and that all goes up for auction with the burden of proof on you, because you forgot to carry the one, because you were just worried about eating a fucking fish and you couldn't even cook the fish because you needed a permit for an open flame and then the health department is going to start asking you a lot of questions about where are you going to dump the scales and the guts this is not a sanitary environment and ladies and gentlemen if you get it if you get sick of it all at the end of the day not even legal to kill yourself in this country thanks again John Ashcroft you weird bible addict can't even handle his own drug you were born free, you got fucked out of half of it, and you wave a flag celebrating. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me see if I can give you a link to something else. He had two good buddies. One guy, he was a practical joker, so he bought one of those rubber dolls. You know, they sell them in the porno stores. Maybe you got one. <laughs> and you blow them up, and they life size dolls. You know, you put a little grease on them, and... He bought one of these dogs, greased it, and put it in his bed and put the cup over it. He called his buddy and said, man, I got a chick over here. She's too much for me. I can't, can't handle about myself. He said, hurry on over here. Before he could hang up the phone, his buddy was coming to the door and said, where is she? He said, she's in the bedroom. His buddy went in the bedroom. He's in the bedroom about one minute. And he came back outside. He said, man, where'd you meet her? He said, God damn. His buddy said, what happened? He said, man, what a freak. I bit her on the neck and she farted and floated out the window. <laughs> There's a party going on, huh?
May I join? Garak. Thank you. Ah, what are you doing up? You're supposed to be in bed. Out of the question. I couldn't stand being cooped up in that dreadful infirmary for another second. Besides, I feel perfectly fine. So, how's the Idanian spice pudding today? How's the spice pudding? Is that all you have to say for yourself? How can you just sit there and pretend that the last ten days never happened? I, for one, Doctor, am perfectly satisfied with the way things turned out. And I see no need to dwell on what was doubtlessly a difficult time for both of us. By the way, I just had the most interesting conversation with Constable Odo. It seems he's under the impression that I was a member of the Obsidian Order. What did you tell him? That he was mistaken, of course. And he believed you? Or he said something about keeping a closer eye on me in the future. I told him, be my guest. I have nothing to hide. Here. I brought you something. What is it? Meditations on a Crimson Shadow by Prelog. More Cardassian literature. I think you'll find this one more to your taste. It takes place in the future, during a time when Cardassia and the Klingon Empire are at war. Who wins? Who do you think? Never mind. Don't tell me. I don't want you to spoil the ending. <laughs> you know, I still have a lot of questions to ask you about your past. I've given you all the answers I'm capable of. You've given me answers, all right. But they were all different. What I want to know is, out of all the stories you told me, which ones were true and which ones weren't? My dear doctor, they're all true. Even the lies? Especially the lies. Yeah, I'm going to send him a new invite right now. It says you're connected, but you're still your audio. It sounds like you're pinging all over the place. You don't hear me? Uh, um, we could use. You want? You don't have Skype. Um, maybe does Discord work on a web browser? Eee, hold on one second. Let me see if I give you a link to something else. Uh, Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to send you a link to something. How do I get a link to no uh no, all right, dang, here we go. Ah, this is I did test this out the other day and it worked with somebody else, but let me all right. Imagine inviting John to Discord. I'm going to try to... Actually, it's not going to work. I don't even know where to send this thing to. John, restart your computer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to email him, ask him to restart. I think you should restart your side. Uh, you can try this link as well. Office put out another digital dragnet for people looking online to prey on children and as usual you see the mugshots there they hauled in a full catch Fox 13's Ken Suarez joining us now live from the sheriff's office substation in Lakeland Ken it seems like the sheriff's office does this kind of online seeing every other month yet the people that are out there looking for for victims either they don't care or they're just not you know, getting the message we're doing this story, as you said, Chris, all the time, unfortunately. So you have to wonder how many people are out there that want to have sex with kids. Or even scarier thought, how many people are out there that may want to have sex with your kid? Well, the sheriff says you can now add 17 more names to that very dangerous list.
Of the 17 people arrested in Operation Child Protector, 16 are guys, one is a woman. All of these guys, five brain cells, four aren't working. Three are Disney employees. Jonathan McGrew and Savannah Lawrence are a couple. Detectives say they told investigators they were looking for a 13-year-old girl to join them. Our fantasy is to play stepdad, stepdaughter, stepmom, teacher, student, uh, maybe even shoplifter where we do a strip search. Kenneth Aquino worked at Disney as a lifeguard. He left his girlfriend who was seven months pregnant with his child in order to go have sex with a child. Then there's Thomas Snyder who worked at a Lakeland nursing home and tried like the others to hook up with a young teen on social media. Even with some of the darkest subjects, Judd always has a zinger or two. Take Edward McGrath. He says he's a professional poker player. He lost. And Jared who left his family in L.A. to come here on vacation. His last name is Justice. That's what we're going to get. So here's the deal. The bottom line is this, that the most stomach-churning thing that I heard today was about one guy who actually admitted to having HIV, and he, just like the others, according to detectives, wanted to go out to find a young kid to have sex with. Chris? It's tough to hear, and, and again, it's, this is every couple of months they do yeah. these stings. It's a lesson, a reminder for parents out there to really monitor who your kids are talking to online. All right, Ken Suarez live for us tonight in Lakeland. Thank Meathead, 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 the meathead, meathead, the meathead, the meathead, meathead, the meathead, the meathead, 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 you are a meathead, a meathead, dead from the neck up. And I sent him an email, but this is ninety nine percent sure on his side. Leave it there. And let me ask you this. Do you think Jimmy is roaming around the White House tonight trying to find a meatloaf to warm himself up on? I don't think the card is eating meatloaf. <laughs> Who the hell are they? They're only from Georgia. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something. I am so sick of Washington and all its works and all them politicians down there and them congressmen. And the congressman, boy. I'll bet you won't find none of them congressmen signing down their electric blankets tonight. Because if they did, their secretaries would get up and go home. <laughs> oh, readers, the Democrats is doing the whole thing. The Democrats. And you put them in there. That's the face you had on you when you come back in the polls. Well, the Democrats way of running this country is to go tell us all how we ought to make sacrifices. God, they're great on that stuff. <laughs> but they're all going to have us over the hill to the poorhouse. We ain't going to be able to drive over there because we ain't got no gas, so we're going to have to walk it. <laughs> oh, the Reader's Digest says walking is very good for you. <laughs> oh, ain't that lovely? The Reader's Digest can always put a little joy into poverty. <laughs> Listen, my whole pain here. My whole pain is this whole thing with the energy and everything. This is all a conspiracy. Don't you know that? It's a conspiracy there. Listen, for years, all our lives, they've been telling us to go out and buy stuff that use energy. You know, all electrical stuff. They got electric toasters, electric ovens, electric stove. Electric stereo, electric TV, electric race, electric hair blower, electric knives, electric every damn thing. Not to mention the cars. And now, after all the big corporations there make the billions and billions of dollars worth of profits, signals, wham, they're changed. And after telling us for years that we can't live without this junk, now they tell us that we gotta live without it. The country is going straight into the dumper. <laughs> Oh, you could also call me. Yeah, he could call me. 916. Yeah, I'll have him call me on the fu fucking phone. There we go. Hold on. All right.
that. You could just fucking. Yeah, I know. It's it's not working, John. You could call me on the phone line, though. Uh, Google Voice. Sent you two e- I sent you two emails. All right, let's hope he calls me on the phone. That's definitely on his side. I've uh, I've tried this out with two other people, and it didn't come through uh, robot roboticized. How is this focus right? I'm not a big fan of focus right. Never yelled. You're just there's such a peacefulness about you. Well, he and I could because we were so different. It could get a little bit combative, as you can probably imagine, because I, I came in, yes, from Georgia family values and, and a strong sense of, um, you know, spiritual growth. Always wanted to be the best I can. And he came with his positive ability to see the world, make money, get out there. And so I think you always hope in a marriage that you can bring out the best in each other. But after, you know, after many years, we realized we weren't. And then you have to move but on. That was probably attractive. You know, um, um, yeah. that, that his bravado is attractive. And, you know, girls, when we're in our 20s, we want to change the men we're with. We just think, well, of that course. love is going to make them a little softer. And you think, well, I will learn how to speak out stronger for what I believe in. Because I, you know, I'm a Southern girl. I, I often just smile and, and keep going. But I have my own thoughts and my own views. And it's time now to express them. What's well, something that would surprise us about Donald on the dating level? Like when you met, you started dating him. Is he romantic? Is he flirty? Like what's he like? Because we just see him one way, I think. Very powerful. I, I just think the first moment I met him, I had a sense like I'd known him before. I think it was much deeper than just, just whatever you might feel. We had a sense of, of like if you believe in past lives or you don't, it was as if we didn't know each other. It felt like family, oddly enough. So, so he, of course. Of course he's talking about everything he owns and has, but I saw, uh, I saw a vulnerable man, and I like vulnerability in people. I like when you've got the ability to visualize and manifest, and he has that power. Whatever his dreams are, he has the ability to move them forward. That's very attractive, but I also saw a vulnerability, which I think makes someone much more interesting. Sorry, Donald, if I'm saying you're vulnerable at a time, but you know, he knows how to get what he wants, and that's what's important, and draws the energy of people together. I think, if anything, or, you probably helped him, because yeah. people want to see vulnerability They're, you know, in other people. It, it, draws, yeah. us, it draws us to them. Yeah. Another thing, I gotta say it about Marla, there's a misconception, right, that, I mean, you are classy the way you discuss this, because Always. you are a classy woman from oh, uh, Southern values and the whole <laughs> thing. But people probably assume that, you know, it's because Donald is still paying you yeah, in, in life. Yeah. He's not. You are mm-hmm. on your own. Yeah, I am. And, you know, the, the, the truth is there's a lot of misconceptions about I walked away a multimillionaire. No way. You saw me working my butt throughout, yeah. throughout school. I was always working hard. And there is a mom, but I always had to work. I'm not saying that's that's good or bad. I like working. Yeah. And I but nothing really comes for free. And there's been folks that think he's paying me not to speak. Absolutely not true. He's the father of my child. I do not want to ever speak negative about it. But do we agree on everything? Absolutely not. We would be married if we still agreed on everything. But that's called real life. That's life. How many exes really agree? I mean, they're exes for a reason, right? For a reason. And and it would be a a tremendous disservice to Tiffany, who doesn't benefit from that. I just want that child to be right in the middle and just be able to love both. Can't fix it. He could call me. Find something, and they're just taking in money by talking about it. Your your filter flag should be, you know, flying red on that. So again, I'm not going to say the Disney thing doesn't matter. It matters to a lot of them, but the entire narrative has turned into you know, don't say gay, which is of course a hoax. So basically, it's a hoax versus people talking about a hoax which is the very thing that the news industry likes the most. They want to get you all worked up about a hoax, one way or the other. Oh, I like the hoax, or I hate the hoax. But if you're arguing about a Disney hoax, basically, you've really been sucked in. I mean, you should feel manipulated, even if you care. You should feel manipulated by that story. That's, That's the instinct I'd like you to develop, is that if it's too easy for the news to do the story... That's a flag, right? That's a flag. All right. Um. <laughs> I don't think you should join Discord. John, don't join Discord. I know you can't hear me. 73, I became convinced for a while that I was receiving messages from outer space. 
But then a psychic reader told me I was actually channeling an ancient Chinese philosopher, and another psychic reader told me I was channeling a medieval Irish bard, and at that time I started reading neurology and I decided it was just my right brain talking to my left brain. And then I went to Ireland and I found out it was actually a six foot tall white rabbit. They call it the puka and the Irish know all about it. So it depends on who I'm talking to, which of these metaphors I use to explain uh, where these uh, weird uh, patterns come mm -hmm. from that jump out of the books and take hold of the readers and change their lives. It's not me. It's a six-foot-tall white rabbit from County Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> or it's the left, it's the right hemisphere of everybody's brain. Mm -hmm. We're only different in the left hemisphere. In the right hemisphere, we all share in the same morphogenetic field. The collective unconscious. And the collective unconscious. Now you've been accused by some people, you, one might think of them as fundamentalist materialists, as, as being something of a fanatic, actually. And yet it seems that you're almost the opposite. Reality is extremely slippery for you. I don't get the feeling that you're stuck on any one model of reality. Well, you know what Freud wrote about projection. Uh, the people, uh, yeah, I have been accused of being a fanatic in uh, the Skeptical Inquirer, but you just have to open that journal to see the people who put it out are all fanatics. And the people who accuse me of being possessed by devils are all the type of right-wing fundamentalist who rolls around and speaks in tongues and gives all the signs of being possessed by the devil themselves. So I, I tend to look at, uh, I, I think I, I basically I'm a mirror. My books are mirrors, and when a monkey looks in, no philosopher looks out. <laughs> well, how do you separate the inside from the outside? Well, that is one of the difficulties. That's why people get embroiled in weirdities while they're reading my books, because I'm dissolving the difference between the inside and the outside. Like most people think their head is inside the universe, but I have demonstrated in several of my books that... Uh, the universe is inside our heads, our head is outside the universe. Uh, like um, the, this whole studio, for instance, it's, it's got to be inside my head or I wouldn't be aware of it. I've got a model of it inside my head. Mm -hmm. Now inside that model of the studio is a model of me. And on top of the model of me is a model of my head. But that's not my real head. My real head contains the studio and my body and this model of a head. And it's the same with the whole universe. The, the whole universe is a model contained in my head, which contains a model of my head. So I've got two heads, the head outside the universe and the head inside the universe. Now, that, sh that should be perfectly clear, but if it isn't, Bertrand Russell has a proof using six-dimensional geometry in his book, The Nature of Human Knowledge. I hope that clarifies which is inside <laughs> and which is outside, and we don't have to get uh, trapped in that again. Well, what, one of the points that you often make is, is that we get caught up in these apparent paradoxes because of linguistic habits and, and a habit that we've had since the time of Aristotle of thinking in terms of syllogistic logic. Well, yeah, I, I believe our language, uh, we, can o we can only uh, see what we observe and we can only observe what we have categories for in our language. That's known as the Whorf Hypothesis in anthropology. Actually, it goes back to Guillaume Battista Vico, an 18th century Neapolitan who has been a major influence on me as well as on James Joyce. And uh, my books are full of neologisms and odd uses of language just to break through the habits of perception that are conditioned by using ordinary English. Mm -hmm. You once wrote a whole book without using the verb is. Yes, that's quantum psychology. Mm -hmm. I also break sentences up in the Burroughs way so there's no subject and predicate. I use Joycey and stream of consciousness. I, I run words together so one word has five different meanings depending on which way you look at the sentence, uh, like Joyce did in Finnegan's Wake. All of this is... Um, attempts to get us out of uh, the lines of word and image that were laid down by our ancestors. After all, if we're seeing the world our ancestors put into our language, we're not seeing the world we're living in. It's obvious that our ancestors did not live with computers, spaceships, uh, George Bush, and other uh, incredible uh, occurrences uh, 
but a typical of our life. John's connecting again. It says you're connected. You sound okay. Here I am. Yay. Yeah. Yay. I can hear you now. I do. Uh, I do hear myself in the background, though. I'll turn it down a little bit. <laughs> John, can you turn down your radio? That's about as low as it's going to go. All right. Let's see here. Well, it's still too high. Anyway. I keep talking so I can... Okay, I'll keep on talking over here. This is what I sound like coming through your uh, speakers. And uh, it looks like you might have cut me out a little bit here. I don't see my side jumping. You shouldn't be able to hear it now if you do. Yeah. All right, I'm good. Whew. All right. Let me do... Uh, one more audio test over here. Uh, and also, do you mind if this is live? Is this, uh, if it's okay, if it's uh, streamed live, or do you want it to be? I don't care. You don't care. All right. So uh, I guess we have to start the interview now, then, right? You good? No, no. Only the eyes of a chief. They see the E plebnista. This was not written for chiefs. Hear me. Hear this! Among my people, we carry many such words as this from many lands, many worlds. Many are equally good and are as well respected. But wherever we have gone, no words have said this thing of importance in quite this way. Look at these three words written larger than the rest with a special pride never written before or since. Tall words proudly saying, we the people. That which you call Eid Plebnista was not written for the chiefs or the kings or the warriors or the rich or the powerful, but for all the people. Down the centuries, you have slurred the meaning out of the words we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this constitution. I am here. Yes, you are here, John. You are here with Nick the Rat. Have you ever imagined uh, this? Uh, your career would bring you to talking to a cartoon rat?
Has it been a week yet? No, I guess I hold on. My my laptop isn't touch screen, so it'll take a minute. Gotta scroll. Ah, it hasn't been a week yet. Okay, bye. Are you looking for a place on the internet where you can finally drop truth bombs on those who disagree with you? Well we have the place for you. Are you mentor? It's the app for arguments. Get your blood pumping with anger and argue with complete strangers over mere pedantry, all through the safety of your phone. Our algorithm uses blockchain and a 69-point questionnaire to match you with some other jackass with differing opinions, use memes and misquotes to own a lib soy boy or dunk on an all-white fascist. The choice is yours. Your mentions will be blowing up after your hot takes hit the feed. You've got me. Argue over life's minutia for tiny itty bitty hits of dopamine that'll make you feel like you're almost alive. Sign up now for the new king of social media. Sound very good for your mental health. Just smoke a joint and go hang out outside or something.
the city of the dead, the living dead, a cursed city where the gates of hell have been opened. You've got to, you must reclose those gates. We interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast. Now, which police authorities have declared a state of emergency, effective immediately, within Dunwich County. All citizens are requested to return to their homes as quickly as possible. In case of necessity, contact this station, Radio WDWC. Did you see, when you were in this trance, did you see anything besides that tombstone? Oh, yes. I saw a priest. Who, by hanging himself, opened the gates of hell. what? It's All Saints Day. A demanding, implacable enemy whose search for blood is never satiated.
fight. Well, I don't like even it. know what. Really hold like. on, let me mute the rate. The rate. Ra- <clears throat> the radio. I don't know what's going on. Okay, bye. I as well do not know what is going on. And that is why I shall bid you all adieu. A douche. I bid you a douche. Uh, I just want to say happy birthday and thank you to John one more time. He knows I love him. Uh, no Agenda show every uh, Sunday and Thursday. Adam Curry uh, and uh, John C. Dvorak. Go check them out. They, uh, they're a lot smarter than me. I'll tell you that much. I'm not a very, I'm not a very smart uh, person because, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rat. But uh, that's... That's just an excuse, I think. That's that's an excuse, and I shouldn't really issue. Uh, <sighs> Diane, let's sell more advertisements. We got a lot of ad space here. John's a big, big, big guy. We gotta. Oh my God, look out! So we gotta sell. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Come back next week, and. Uh, Enjoy the sewer. Thank you, Trey. Sir, everyone died except this one guy. Wouldn't be uh my name something. Is Bill. Oh my is god, Andrew? Bill! How did you avoid death like that? I have balls. Crystal balls from the Dark Sewer Network. I'd be dead without them. Or your balls today. Only sixty nine ninety nine for a pair.
After a time, you may find that having is not so pleasing a thing after all as wanting. It is not logical, but it is often true. Go kill animals, Brad!